Most likely will have to endure today. The weather will be a factor. It is going to continue to rain. Our temperature 58 degrees. The wind may pick up as the afternoon goes along at 11 to 14 miles per hour right now. And you can't fit yourself between the raindrops this afternoon. So Boston College and Wake Forest getting ready to go after each other. Here's Jim Grove, head coach at Wake Forest, a 24 and 29 record at the school. And of course, his previous time spent at Ohio, a long time at the hand of Fisher DeBerry as an assistant at Air Force. And of course, uh, Tom O'Brien, of course, has uh, coached in pretty good stand as well. O'Brien in his uh, second and uh, ninth season at Boston College, they've made six straight bowl appearances. He learned at the hand of George Welch at Virginia. Now combine the two head coaches, Fisher DeBerry and Welch, in total wins, and you see their offspring and why they're pretty good. Doing pretty good. Yeah, doing, doing very good. well. Coin toss was won by Wake Forest, and uh, they have deferred their option to the second half. Boston College wants the ball first, and so Sam Swank getting ready to kick it off. And let's see who's deep. It's going to be Will Blackman. And Andre Callender back deep for Boston College. And the series record tied at 5-5-2. Uh, five, five and two. Wakes won the last two. The last BC win was at Fenway Park. And I was a year old in 1953. My goodness. That's a rare re to love that. That's a rare revelation, but there it is. Take heed, ladies. Take heed. That's right. Rings around the tree. There are plenty of them. This is Callender at the two, and we're underway. Callender has an opening and gets out over the 30-yard line. And ball's ball loose. Free. Ball is free. Wake says they've got it. Lake Forest football. My, my, my. On a day when the footing is off, the handling will be wet as well. And we've already drawn the first miscue of the game. And coming away with it, that's Vaughn. Chip Vaughn, the redshirt freshman. Tom O'Brien not happy at the turn of events because his team, who wanted the ball first, will find themselves on defense first. Let's look again. Talk about the weather conditions. I don't think the weather has anything to do with it. That's a good hit. And when you get a hit, you separate ball from player. Of course, great coverage by the Demon Deacons. And BC's got to say, what is it about Wake Forest? We can't get out of our heads. They're already on their heels now. This is Wake Forest starting at the 31-yard line. Corey Randolph, fifth-year senior, carrying his own number and taking it down to the 25-yard line. And uh, look at Corey Randolph last week against Florida State. Had a pretty good afternoon, as a matter of fact, running and pitching and throwing. Uh, last week, uh, 12 for 17 for 24, 131 yards for Corey Randolph. Second week Florida State. back as a starter, pretty impressive numbers going against the likes of the Seminole defense. And look at the pass completion percentage, of course, at 75%. We have a flag down on the play. On the offense, number 75, 10 yards. So Wake Forest is backed up, erased the five-yard gain, turned it into a 10-yard loss back to the 40-yard line. A week ago, when they had problems with their offense early, it was the inefficiency on first down against Florida State. Steve Ballow is one of my favorite offensive linemen. Mark Lay in the backfield. Play action for Randolph on first and long. The pass is incomplete because the receiver, Zach Selman, fell down. Let's take a look at our Chevy starting lineups first of all for the Demon Deacons. Chris Barkley, 36 touchdowns, close to 3,500 uh, yards of rushing. McWhite is his fullback. Morton, Bolden, and Selman are the receivers. Up front, Steve Vallos, a Lombardi trophy candidate that Doc referred to. Wesley Bryant, R.B. Jones, and Matthew Brin. Second down and 20 coming up now for Wake Forest at the Boston College 40-yard line. B.C. fumbles the opening kickoff. And uh, trying to take advantage of it, the Demon Deacons. Barclay runs up into the middle, gets about the 34-yard line, but we have a flag down on the play. Jamie Silva on the tackle. And so both teams having troubles getting started here early on. Chop block. Block below the waist is going to be charged against Wake Forest. Tom DeJoseph settling the uh, yard marker out. I don't... He sees he probably had their feel of these chop blocks. Chop block on the offense, number 61, 15 yards from the spot of the foul, second down. Well, and let's take a look at our Chevy starting lineups on defense with 
Uh, Kiwanuka and Washington now. B.J. Raji becomes the, the chief guy there. Ottolini and Brace are the replacements. And then, of course, Nick Larkin at the end. Brian Toll, two sacks, Stud. 27 to five TDs. <laughs> he's their short yardage yeah. guy in offense. He, he's a baller. Yeah, that's the strength of their team. Ryan Glasper with Silva, Morris, and Akins, who uh, also picked off a pass against Virginia a week ago. Second down and uh, half of Boston remaining here. Barclay breaks out. Trying to break tackles to get to midfield. And midfield is uh, just a four-yard gain for him. The tackle made by Nick Larkin. Raji, one of those guys that can really anchor a defensive line. He'll help BC a great deal. He's a road heel, a guy who gets penetration and can run to the football. Wake Forest has just really squandered an outstanding opportunity. You get a change of possession, fumble, good field position, but they've had two penalties now that have negated their success. Third and 29, they're at midfield, or actually a yard in their own territory. This drive started at the BC 30. Randolph, the pass, steps up in the pocket nicely. Pass is complete. It's still going to be shy of the first down. It's Demir, or Demir Bolden, Anquan Bolden's brother, of course. He's just a yard shy of the first down. You're in field goal territory. Glasper with the tackle. Pretty good protection, offensive line. The toll comes in. Again, a mobile quarterback steps up. Good adjustment to the football in bad weather. Here you see Bolden came on strong against the Seminoles in the second half. Hey, I'm wide open, man. He's saying, give me the football. They're going for it on fourth and a yard. Wake Forest. They're in. Closing in on the red zone. Here comes the pitch to Barkley on the corner. Has the first down inside the 20. And it's dropped at the 17-yard line. Now, BC has seen enough of this in practice going against their offensive line. Wake Forest, guys, handle their assignment first. They stay up, no belly floppers, and they keep putting pressure on you from their wide receivers all the way through to their tight ends. When you have the threat of option, you, you freeze, you paralyze your opponent. Pretty good execution in crunch. First and ten out of the shotgun. Randolph. Play must have busted down, but Randolph makes the best of it. Gets to the five-yard line. Again, Silva, who had 14 tackles a week ago against Virginia, comes up with the stop. But it's a catch more than a tackle at the five, and it's close to another first down. Now, we've watched Boston College enough to know how aggressive they are on defense. But see, now guys are thinking, well, am I supposed to do this or that? Well, then you've got to... Deceptive athletes running this option. Randolph, what a gem for the Demon Deacons. Randolph in his third straight start. Handoff now Barclay, and he struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage. Again, Silva in on the tackle. Also, Odolini had a handle on the on the affair, but it's no gain on the play for Wake Forest. And it brings up second and goal, and they're knocking at the door just shy of the five-yard line. Brian told he blew that play up. Yes, he did. You have to have someone sacrifice their body, try to take that fullback out of the equation and force the pitch. Well, one of the things Tom O'Brien likes about him, that's why he uses him on offense, he get lower than anybody else. Randolph on the pitch, has some open. And down to the two-yard line, Corey Randolph, again brought down by Silva. Boy, that appeared to be open, and then it was shut down. Silva, you mentioned a good call on that. You coming down to, at that safety spot, you can't be shy of contact. And then you watch it. Did a flow. Immediately he fills in the gap, gets right in there, makes the play. BC has got to man up at this point. Second down. And goal. Ball fumbled on the exchange. Randolph picks it up and surges ahead. The question is, did he get in? It doesn't look the like question he did. Is, did he get the football? I thought he got it. You, you're usually right. Well, it's a 50-50 shot before you get too excited. <laughs> Here you watch it. You talk about the, the conditions. I don't think the weather conditions had anything to do with that. Pretty good snap up front. One of the best centers you'll see in this conference, Steve Justice. Amazingly, this kid in spring ball was second team. You talk about a guy that has emerged as a real stud at the center spot. Third and goal for Wake Forest at the one. Barclay dances outside. He's going nowhere. Blowing the play up. <laughs> Silva, Morris, Aikens. and Aikens. The Aikens. Destructive. I, when, you know, when I make a comment like a team has got to man up, okay, so you lost a fumble. You had bad field position. Somebody from Boston College has just got to get nasty. 
and that's going there. Getting there in a hurry, getting your friends involved, playing relentless defense. Sam Swank on to attempt what will be a 21-yard field goal out of the hold of Ryan Plackemeyer. They're at the left hash mark. He's 9 for 13. Kick is up, and it is good. So Wake Forest cashes in on Boston College's fumble of the opening kick. They get three, a semi-victory for the Eagles as Swank hits one from 21 yards out here in Boston. This Back at Chestnut Hill as Wake Forest leading Boston College. Opportunity knock on the door. Wake got three. They should have gotten seven. But uh, Boston College's defense stout on the goal line. Great recovery. Yes, Great it was. recovery by the Eagles. When everything's going against you and your defense comes in, you slam the door on a goal line situation and force the team to settle for three. I say victory to the Eagles despite what happened. Ball falls off the tee. You saw the drive, 10 plays, 28 yards. Of course, BC fumbles the opening kickoff that gave Wake Forest the opportunity at the BC 30. But BC, uh, Wake Forest needed a 28-yard pass to Demir Bolden to save the drive, get him down into the red zone where they failed to get the touchdown. Well, look what Wake did. They had a penalty, two penalties. Yeah. They just didn't seize the moment. No, they didn't. Should be up 7-zip on this. See if it comes back to bite them. And one of them was a chop block, which came into... We'll, we'll talk, talk more about we'll the chop block. We'll talk more about that. Here's, Bla uh, here's Blackman. He turns a corner, one of the top return men in the country. He's got the seam and one man to beat. Steps out of bounds, knocked out of there by the kicker, Swank, at the 41-yard line. Playmaker. And that, that's where Boston <laughs> College... We'll set up first and 10. Let's go to the sidelines and Scott Przewanski. You know, guys, BC has a pretty good backup quarterback in Matt Ryan. All he did was lead them to two victories, but they go to a different level when Quentin Porter is on the field. And Porter returned after missing two weeks with a sprained ankle to take on Virginia. All he did was uh, throw for over 300 yards and one touchdown. This guy is a different person in the huddle, the players say. He exudes confidence. You can really see it on the field. First down and throws out to the flats incomplete. Pass intended out there for Patty Lynch, the fullback. A walk on. That brings up second down. There's Quentin Porter out of Portland, Maine. You see what his stats are 70% completion. He was 20 of 27 against Virginia a week ago. He practiced all of the week prior to the Virginia game in a boot. And uh, Dana Bible, offensive coordinator, said it's the funniest thing you'd ever seen. He'd get out on the corner sprinting, he couldn't stop. On second down. Those boots. Yeah. <laughs> it, he did say it took him about 10 minutes to get up to speed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, our Chevrolet starting lineups. Will Blackman, who just brought the kick back Play 38 maker. yards. Yes, he is. Two touchdowns. He's a converted defensive back. L.B. Whitworth, he'll share with Callender up back. Lynch, Lester, and Miller complete the receiving core. And then one of the hugest front lines you will see. Uh, they've only allowed four sacks in six games. Jeremy, Trueblood, Martin, Ross, Blackman, and Cherilus. An outstanding offensive line for Boston College. Slobba knockers. I like that. Third and oh, nine. Yeah. And uh -oh, the pass to the wing, and it's not much there. Out there in the flats is Blackman, and he has thrown for a loss at the 38-yard line. Alfonso Smith comes up to make the tackle as we take a look at the Wake Forest defense. Unchedgerial Scales, their leader up front. Matt Robinson yeah. may be undersized, but is a high-running motor. Giles Tucker and Jeremy Thompson. The full, the uh, linebackers led by John Abadi, who was National Player of the Week defensively two weeks ago. Pierre Easley and, Al and of course, Aaron Curry. And Patrick G, a veteran, line a veteran defensive back with Kevin Peterson. Alfonso Smith also there as well. Back to punt. This is Johnny Ayers, and Wake will let this one roll to a gratuitous bounce, and it'll take it right down to the 11-yard line. And that's where Wake Forest will get it on their second possession of the game. The rain continues to fall, and it is Wake Forest leading Boston College. Back after this word from your local ACC station. Vote for the toughest play of the week and a chance to win a brand new Polaris ATV in the Polaris Tough Play of the Week contest. Visit PolarisToughPlays.com, watch clips of this week's toughest plays, vote for your favorite, and win. Wake Forest with the ball at their own 11-yard line, leading here three to nothing. Hand off now to Chris Barkley, one of the leading rushers in the ACC, and he breaks tackles and gets another Wake Forest first down out over the 25-yard line. To the 26th that doc walker is an example of just how good that kid is. Yeah, it really is it all happens when you hit a good tight end good tackle balance on the right side selman good combination tag on tag 
Gaskins also getting it done. Wide receivers blocking in the secondary. Great operation by Valos and company. Out of Boardman, Ohio, first and ten. Back to throw. Randolph pass complete to Morton. And Morton is brought down after a first down out to the 38-yard line. Taji Morris is the man who picks him up. Nate Morton is a junior from Harlington, Texas. Big target, too. Six foot three, 202 pounds. Ball's right on the mark. We've seen Nate do this. Haul it in. I like a guy to drop his shoulders and charge to the chains. Former quarterback. We saw him throw oh, a 37. Throw it. Yeah, he threw a 37-yard bullet last week against Florida State. Another first down for the Deacons who are moving the ball out of their own 38. Randolph, here's the reverse action to Kevin Marion. Marion turning the corner. You can see the water spout up. And, and he gets him yard about, about five yards. When he, whenever he gets the ball in his hands, you just kind of hold your breath because he's a speedster that makes plays. On our Hummer scoreboard, Texas Tech by a field goal over Kansas. A lot of the action is later on this afternoon. But look at John Abadi. Look at the, he, he's got that bandage over the nose because the helmet sometimes comes down and breaks the bridge and Doc's got Doc's oh, yeah. got scar tissue yeah, in that yeah, well. scar tissue <laughs> second down at about five holding in motion across the formation and off to Barclay Barclay big block by his fullback McWhite and also by Matthew Brim and he gets close to midfield and close to another Wake Forest first down he might be a yard short Keith Willis the backup defensive tackle Coming in to make the play for yeah. Boston College. Good eyes on that with Brim, and because Steve Justice is so athletic, they pull the center on a number of plays to get him out front. Their guards are big, but they can run. Third and one. Wake trying to stay on schedule. Randolph pulls off the line of scrimmage and looks for a signal out of the no huddle. And that nearly pulled Jim Rambella off sides. Hand off with a reverse action straight through. Barclay first down. He's in BC territory now. Down to the 48-yard line. Boy, when you can run it, you just you dictate so much of the game. And you, what you do is you demoralize your opponent. The thing with Boston College, because they go against, because they go against their own in practice, they're not going to be discouraged by this. They'll hang in as they showed us in the last series and try to make a play. Pruitt coming up with a tackle for Boston College. Another first down, the third of this drive for the Deacons. Here's McWhite, their fullback, catching a ball from Corey Randolph, and uh, he gets out to the 43-yard line of Boston College. Going to be a gain on the play of about five. Larry Anam in on the tackle. And good hands by McWhite. You know, big fullback, a pile driver who has show soft hands this is not good for bc bc's already got that's enough beast. lineman hurt that's toll that's either toll or ramella and if uh, either or i mean they're in trouble either, either because, one yeah, that's washington. ramella kiwanuka out this is yep kiwanuka and washington you yeah no. well, you don't want that and here's our all tell text to win ACC Trivia Challenge. BC head coach Tom O'Brien was offensive coordinator under which successful ACC coach? George Welch, Bobby Bowden, Mac Brown. Use your Alltel wireless phone to text your answer to short code ACC Fan. That's 222-326. Or visit jpsports.com. Randolph back to throw. The rush is on. He somehow dodges two tackles. Now he won't get away from a third. In pursuit, Ryan Glasper led the charge. He wasn't the first to hit him. Come in waves. Come in waves. And you know when you're going up against a quarterback like Randall, you've got to get to him. But it's a jailbreak. Great rush inside, as you mentioned. Henderson, leader of the pack. And at this point, you know, if Randolph would have, should have, could have tossed that to the tuba player. Zach, because you're not going to get away. Too many eagles, buddy. <laughs> Loss of five brings up third and ten. BC bends again on defense. Here comes the pass downfield. It is incomplete for a double covered Kenneth Moore. Great coverage. Very nice coverage in the secondary. And, you know, one thing about Randolph, because he's such a threat to run, I think they thought they could get the corners to bite. They didn't. Well disciplined effort by Boston College. Stayed in their lanes. He couldn't get outside him. He had to get rid of it. They're in the double coverage. And now we see one of the big weapons that uh, Wake Forest has. Ryan Plackemeyer, <laughs> the ACC's best punter at 46. We saw him 
kick only once under 50 and seven punts at Tallahassee last Lethal week. Lethal weapon. And look at this one. I mean, this is a cannon, and look where it's coming down into the end zone. He got that almost 52 yards in the air. It'll come out to the 20, where Boston College will pick it up first and 10. It's the Deacons leading the Eagles 3 0. The rain continues to fall. It's been nine straight days. Many here in New England say it's rained ever since the Red Sox bowed out of the league championship series. I don't know if that's necessarily true. But Wake Forest right now has already picked up a beneficiary of the bad weather, picking up a fumble on the opening kickoff and getting a field goal. Boston College, their second time around, and they fumble the ball. It's still loose. Wake Forest has it. And it's a touchdown for the Demon Deacons. John Abadi was the only one back for Wake Forest. And the Demon Deacons get on the board with their defense. Porter it's, never had this ball. No, he didn't. It's not accidental that a body gets around the football. You know, woulda, shoulda, coulda. You tell your kids on offense, especially when you're backed up in bad terror, just fall on it. And I'm sure Coach O'Brien will reiterate, just reiterate that. Just fall on it. And the beast of all beasts getting after it. I tell you what, you, did you see Matt Robinson? <laughs> Porter goes down to pick the ball up, and Robinson is pushing that defense offensive yeah. tackle out of the way. And now, that's smart. We talked about negating the size. Robinson did so that time. Beautifully done. Well, Watch you this see the again. Football, you look at bad field position. Here's a body. See, he's on it. There's Robinson. There's the push. They're going after it now like a pack of wild dogs. And he gets his athletic enough to hold on and get to pay dirt. The BC's got to snap into this. I mean, you can't. I mean, Wake Forest, too good a football team to be this charitable to and expect to beat them. That's Robinson at the bottom of that pile. That's a body for the score. And a body who had nine tackles, uh, one for loss against BC and an interception last year, recovers a fumble. And now, apparently, oh, there I, is I, a replay I here. Question it. Yeah, well, just we're kind of back on maybe the one yard line he was backwards you're gonna say where was the ball did the tip of the ball break the plane it's not a question of whether it's Wake Forest possession it's their possession is did they score and where did the knee touch down four plays now for the Eagles 17 yards Wake Forest 17 plays 92 yards a bit of a discrepancy on that now, this is what they're reviewing the ball pops loose a body comes away with it now there's this now uh, that's the key it yeah. looks like right there he's down at the one yeah helmet over the plane ball not no that'll that's be right. the question Yep. At the one yard line. We will spot first and goal at the one yard line. Wake for it. So take the points off the board, give Wake the ball, and four cracks at it from the Boston College one. Well, last time Wake had similar, a similar opportunity. They were forced to settle for three. BC stopped Wake Forest last time they got down here at the one. We've seen it, Steve, in all sports. Certain teams are matchups. You can't figure it out, even over the span of time. This seems to be a tough matchup for Boston College. And that's Wake Forest. Uh, There's John Abadi. Poor defensive guy. They can never get a break. Never get a break. Never get a break. If that were fullback, probably would have got it. McWhite and Barclay, the setbacks. This is McWhite, and he's not going to get there. Forget about that. Nope. BC has that option covered. Well, low man wins. Silva was the winner that time. And we've seen now, Raji this time, I guarantee it, somewhere in the bottom, there he is, 90, right there, folks, and he is an immovable <laughs> force. Yes. He has great leverage. I watched him against the Seminoles have a great ball game. Second down and goal. Hand off again, McWhite, same play, same result. See, you, you, your team feeds off this. This is where a defense can come in, bail this offense out, keep momentum and spirit high. Wake Forest has got to find a way to get the ball in the end zone. Raji, Willis, Henderson, all at the point of attack. And a big third down and goal coming here for the Demon Deacons. Same formation. Will it be the same play? I doubt it. Double tight end set. Randolph, the pitch to Barclay. What a move. Too what many yellow move. shirts. Let's see. Is he in there? Oh, yeah. Yes. Touchdown, there. Wake Forest. 
Boy, BC <laughs> had him ganged up on the corner, but leave it to Chris Barkley to find a way through the maze that's, and into the end zone. Steve, that's why he's the best. Because they had him outflanked. And he makes a move. And a lot of us have done this in our youth in the backyard or daydreaming. But this is against the Eagles at home. Matched up three on one. Now you see him. Now you don't. Touchdown, Demons. With 3.52 left in the first quarter, Demon Deacon's most opportunistic here out of the hold of Plackemeyer. And the second fumble of the day, Sam Swank nails the point after. Chris Barclay's 37 touchdown. Here's where he stands in rushing touchdowns. Now, Ted Brown isn't all of a sudden so unreachable anymore for NC State. He's got Travis Zachary in his sights, and he's just tied up with Warwick Dunn. You always have some, a little help from your friends, but if individual play comes into it at all, you have to give it to Barclay on that. Talk about being under pressure. Big time run by big time back. Already 35 yards and eight totes for Barclay and one touchdown on the afternoon. And a big score here on a rainy day where BC's only run four plays from scrimmage this afternoon. Dreaming of a new plasma TV? Sure. Gaming system or laptop computer? How about it? How about a million dollars? Bell South is giving one lucky fan the chance to win it all during halftime of this year's Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Log on to Bell BellSouthSports.com to enter the 2005 Bell South Kick for a Million Sweepstakes, and you could win an extreme bundle of home entertainment equipment and a cool million dollars. Steve, you know, we talk a lot about time of possession. Take another look at this. Offensive line surge, pretty decent. But the Eagles, I think, won the number count. Five to one by my numbers. Some of those could be skewed. No. Because of age. <laughs> Memory kind of gets a little weak. No, you were right. But I tell you what, on that one, Barclay deserves How about time of possession? Some stats are simply for just to chew up paper. Then some have significance. Nine minutes, 13 seconds for the Demon Deacons. The Eagles of Boston Mom, College, a minute 55. It's my birthday. Yes, it is. Great. I guess it's no. Great birthday present hey. for Chris Barkley, who's 22 years of age today, the senior out of Louisville, Kentucky, who is second all time in rushing in Wake Forest history. Here is the short kick. And it is taken down at the 35 yard line. Boston College receiver that time was Jolon Dunbar. All right, I want you to watch some focus offensive line. When your center can get to the second level here, that's impressive. You cut off the backside. Then you have hat on hat, then the back that makes a move, and then gets to the end zone. Pretty impressive. I mean, and he, he does it with a little help from his friends, but outstanding play interior line, get to the second level on goal line. And there's the Demon Deacons. They've run 20 plays to four. BC never got a play off their last time with the football. Porter hands off. And this is going to be Callender. Hit immediately in the background. Backfield by Scales. Gaddish will uh, finish him off along with Patrick G. So Boston College, their own 40-yard line. A Hummer scoreboard in the SEC this afternoon. Uh -oh. Alabama trailing Mississippi. Texas Tech and Kansas are tied in the Big 12 and three. Raiders. Michigan State and Ohio State. Big battle. Ohio State beaten by Penn State last week. Penn State at Michigan today. Wisconsin over Minnesota in the first. And our game right here led by Wake Forest. 10 nothing. Porter back to throw. Passes. Drop. Right off the shoulder pads of Will Blackman who ran before he had the ball. Yeah, and we know Will can catch it. Porter, ball right on the money. This is when you try to do too much. You try to get all 10 points back in one play. It doesn't work that way. You just got to take it one possession at a time, and good things will happen to you down the road. Quentin Porter, who has completed 70% of his passes this year, he's thrown six touchdowns, and he's been picked off three times. His fumble, the last drive, has set up a touchdown for Wake. Here is Porter, hit as he throws, pass is complete. And this is going to be Soleil. Soleil on the play. Chip Vaughn with the tackle. We talked about Matt Robinson in the open. 235 pounds running a little twist game there. Great move in there by Cheerless. I mean, this kid's an animal. 
right tackle for Boston College. Good throw and catch. Porter showed poise in the pocket, and results were good for the Eagles. And we've got an injured player for Boston College. It's going to be Jeremy Trueblood, their fifth-year senior out of Indianapolis. He looks like he'll come off under his own power. Well, you sure wouldn't want to have to have to carry him. No, not, not at that weight. <laughs> you got to bring the card out. Let's get it on that offensive line. Let's go to the sidelines, see how wet Scott Brzezlanski is. Yeah, very wet. You know, today is pretty much like it's been in the Boston area for the past 10 days. Lots and lots of rain on the field. Talked to a couple of the officials. They said it's slick, but not anything out of the ordinary. The players uh, using the field turf cleats that they normally use as well. But there is, if there is one change, guys, it's with the footballs. They usually go through about maybe six to eight a game. Here in the first half, they've already used eight. Guys are walking around with garbage bags full of footballs with towels on them, trying to keep them dry. And I think we saw Quentin Porter have a little problems with that on that last series. How about your shoes, Scotty? Are you keeping your <laughs> shoes dry? I'm in trouble, guys. I am in trouble. <laughs> Play action for Quentin Porter, and a blitz by Robinson makes his throw to the tight end, Chris Miller, short. And a great play. That time by Matt Robinson, who got in and put big heat on Porter. And the guy we talked about, Matt Robinson, 235 pounds, redshirt sophomore. You know, it's not the size of the dog, but the bite and the bark. And there he goes, 42, getting to the quarterback with speed and quickness. This is what Wake Forest on defense, Dean Hood, their coordinator, told us don't expect him to stay in one spot long. They're going to hit some gaps and get after it. Another fumble for Boston College, and it's recovered. Looks like Patty Lynch will get up on it and recover it after a two-yard loss. That's the third fumble of the day, but the first one that BC has picked up of their own. Yeah, well, see, you got Patrick Ross, you've got a great center, your captain, and quarterback, Porter. Those two guys have got to get this solved now. Coach Bible, the offensive coordinator for the Eagles, it comes a point where, hey, guys, the X's and O's are done. We can't go over the exchange. Yeah. You guys have to handle that, but you got to get it done. Larry Lester is split wide to the top side now. Blackman wide to the bottom side. Receiver in the slot as well as Porter's back to throw. He's going up top for Lester. Nice catch by Lester, upended by Alphonse Smith. But it's a Boston College first down. They're second of the day, and they're at the Wake Forest 33. Steve, we talked about this all week long with the weather. What would Boston College, would it put, force Boston College to run the ball? Not at all, because they're balanced, and they're going to do what they do. They worked in this all week long, as Scott pointed out. The weather has been like this all week, and so they've taken advantage of it. Here's Porter, handoff to Calendar, and Calendar hauled back. Pierre easily led the charge, along with Aaron Curry. And Joriel Scales is at the bottom of the pile. Not much gain there for Andre Calendar. Calendar and L.B. Whitworth share the rushing duties. And basically, the Dana Bible says, whoever's, uh, you know, we'll stay with one, one series. Of course, they haven't been able to play a full series so far this well, right. afternoon because <laughs> they this is as long as they've had the football since pregame warm-up. Second down and nine. Porter back to throw. Easily misses the pass out there. It is picked off. That is Smith. Alfonso Smith, the redshirt freshman with his second interception of the day, and he brings it down at the Wake Forest seven-yard line. And you have to give that assist again to Scales. I don't know how many times we're going to call this young man's name. He's having a ball game. You mentioned easily 51, junior linebacker. So he has some time, then it closed. They closed the door. At that point, he laid up a lofter. And sometimes, you know, the thickness, the wet weather may have slowed the ball down. This is one Porter would love to have back, but it's the result of pressure. There are three Demon Deacons at the point of attack. Great reaction in the secondary. That, folks, was a gimme, and Smith was glad to get it. Intended for Jason Lilly. Instead, it's an interception. First and ten. Wake Forest at their own seven. Corey Randolph under center. Hand off Barclay. Barclay has some maneuvering room. Nice block on the corner by the center. Justice, and he'll get out to the 20-yard line. It'll be a gain of 13 on the play for Chris Barclay. And as the first quarter comes to an end, Quentin Porter died in the booth and said, what was wrong with that? Boy, R.B. Jones, left guard, right there, folks, getting it done. Rollerblade, putting the Eagles on skates and driving them. This offensive line, they've heard all week about the size of B.C. Now they're showing you what they're made of. In the shotgun, this is Randolph, quarterback draw, and he'll get up to the 25-yard line. It'll be a nice six-yard game. There's Pierre Easley. He led the charge in that defensive unit out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. 
John Abadi, Aaron Curry, his running mates. And there you see Matt Robinson over his shoulder. Now we talked about one of the factors in this game, negating BC's size. And as Doc has pointed out, well, they've done it with their speed. Second down and four. Wake's been on schedule most of the time. Winding play down in the first quarter. Randolph. Flat pass complete. Barclay and look at the turf. Trying to make a move. Yep. See, he, he already anticipated what he wanted to do. And uh, the, the turf wouldn't allow him to do it. That's the end of the first quarter. Lost a two on the play, but Wake has the ball. On a rainy day in Chestnut Hill, it's Wake Forest by 10 through 1. The world's best-selling automatic Time for our Progress Energy Progress Report. We look at the first quarter stats. Wake Forest leads this game, and they lead the statistics. They're up 10-0. BC has committed three turnovers, two fumbles, and an interception. And two of those turnovers have directly set up scores. A third is pending. Steve Martin, Rick Doc Walker, Scott Brzezwanski at Chestnut Hill. Corey Randolph back to throw on third down. And the pass is complete. Now, was he inbounds? They say yes. And it is complete. Out into the flats to Kenneth Moore, the sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. Silver on the tack. And the key is he takes the inside burst release. Now, keep it, keep it vertical, then shallow out, and right there. Good hands, feet are in, very well done. The key was to burst off the release, reestablishing the stem, and then going out and catch the football. 12-yard reception, sets up another first down. Randolph, this drive started at the 7. Pass complete to Barclay, and Barclay finds very little running room out there once he got the ball. Tackle made on the play by Jeff Burns. He would. He avoided a kill shot at the end. Yeah. <laughs> One thing you, gotta, you have to do if you're the Eagles, you got to get this guy. You got to neutralize his success. Here's Jeff Burns. Now he is the third guy in after Kiwanuka was injured. Jake Ottolini has left the field and he's banged up. And now Burns is the third defensive end for BC out on the left side. Second down now at eight. Randolph out of the gun. The pitch to Barkley around the right. Ooh, Henderson is there, along with also Brown. Ricky Brown and Ray Henderson. The strength of this BC team is its linebackers, and they proved it on that play. Well, these kids play with a lot of pride. They're very well coached from the defensive side of the ball, and they understand responsibility football. Now they just got to crank up the passion, which they've done. Their offense has put them in a bad shot, but these kids have continued to fight. Wake up, 40 more yards on that play, third and 12. Third down conversions, good for the Demon Deacons so far today. Oh, slip screen on that one. Barclay, great play on the outside. You talk about that backer play, Steve. Continues to go. Ricky Brown making the tackle that time. And this will bring up the punting unit one more time here from the 44-yard line. You know, it's not always the spectacular plays that add continuity to a good unit. He recognized the screen. Then he slips the block, comes in outside in, and delivers a blow. Very well done by Ricky Brown. Ryan Plackemeyer is in. Will Blackman back to receive. You look at Plackemeyer. His first was 48. His average this season is 46. And we've got some movement. Flag down on the play. There's a snap. False start. 43 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Takes Wake back to their own 40-yard line unnecessary as well you know these are the little things that drive coaches nuts you get in you're in a punt formation you want to just settle in now because you have a great punter you may not be penalized as a result of that five yards it's true this would be a challenge for blackman who will have to make a decision when that ball floats over the 10 yard line and you can bet Blackamire can get it there this one a little below Blackamire's standards and on too much yeah, I did. We got a flag on this. This, this may come back. Yep. But because you're punting to a guy that can take it the distance, it becomes critical. It's a 38-yard punt pending. And that is in the low category for Plackemeyer, but maybe it's a testimony to the weather. This, this appears to be against the Eagles. Yep. Looks like a hold against Boston College. 
They'll be marching that off while we take this time out. Wake Forest leading Boston College 10 0 at Chestnut Hill. Football brought to you in part by Altel. Well, the headgear. Whoa, look at that headgear. That is really something. Is that Mike Hogwood? <laughs> That's why he didn't want to do the sideline. All right, Porter on the throw. Pass is complete to his tight end, Chris Miller, at the 14 yard line. And it's going to be a three yard game. Look at the detail in that. That's I mean, nice. That is really that something. That is nice. And the eagle flapping at the uh, does that go continually on battery or does he have to? And I think he's got to do it manually. Every time you squeeze the beer can, you know it flaps. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and seven after the gain of three. Handoff goes to Whitworth. He'll turn the corner. LB Whitworth, but no. Riley Swanson in on the tackle. He's the backup corner playing in place of Kevin Patterson today, and he makes a nice stop on the play. And it'll be a loss of about two yards on it. We talked about Boston College and their defensive effort against Barclay. Now watch the Demon Deacons show you what they do. String it out. Don't let it turn the corner. The madman, a body inside, the beast, keeping things going. Great corner support. Nice play by Wake Forest. Third down and nine coming up. Porter out of the shotgun. Pocket forms nicely, pass down the middle of the field, up for grabs, and Curry can't seem to get there. Intended for Larry Lester, Josh Gaddis got it airborne. Boy, Quentin Porter, you can read his mind. He's thinking, my goodness, are you kidding me? He plays as well. The pocket doesn't break down. He steps up, about to make a play. Really, was covered well, number one, and they're very lucky. Talk about dodge a bullet yet again. That could have been Easley's ball. Could have been a hero. Yep. Could have been Curry as well. Yeah, Curry or Easley. Yeah. Pick your demon deacons. Yeah. <laughs> Willie Idolette back to get the punt of Johnny Ayers, who will be doing it in his end zone. And he gets a low line drive out there. Idolette backed up, fumbles the football. And Wisely gets down on it, but he lost yardage on the play down to the 38 yard line. That's where Wake Forest takes over first and 10. Larry and I make sure he stays down. The Demon Deacons lead the Eagles back after this time out from your local station. Treated. You gotta get Amiga. ACC football brought to you in part by Toyota. Steve Martin, Rick Doc Walker, Scott Krzywonski, Chestnut Hill Alumni Stadium. Home of the Eagles, but right now Wake Forest feeling very much at home. First and 10, up by 10. And they are at their own 40 38, but not for long. Chris Barkley drags BC tacklers, including Larry Anam, into Boston College territory at the 49. It'll be a gain on the play of about 13. Boy, Brett, you watch 79 White for Wake Forest. It's going to come around. These guys, they slide the line a bit. They keep a man on man. Of course, you got the great one there. See, not, he didn't overrun it. The key was that he didn't overrun the defender. Shows some athleticism, opened up a seam. Blitz is on, but Barkley runs by it. And he gets up to the, about the 44-yard line of Boston College. A four-yard gain. Anam in on the tackle. Four-yard gain. Damon White fullback. Great collision at the point of attack. Belton and McWhite, these two fullbacks, also have a lot to do with Barclay and Andrews and their success. And defensive coordinator Frank Spaziani decided to throw the blitz in, but Wake handled it very well. Uh, again, no belly floppers. Nope. Both teams are excellent at keeping their big people up and moving. Some of the tight end set up over on the left. They've got to win that side. This is Barkley up the middle, and he's following Steve Vallos' block down to the 41-yard line where he's two yards away from the first down. Jay Raji on the tackle. Got a call to recycle. Yellow line. Shows you the first down. Yards to get. Call to recycle.org. First down marker. You see it there in yellow. And Wake Forest sits two yards away from it. Steve-O, this is a pivotal time in the ball game. Wake Forest can either right now take a huge step. Randolph on the pitch. No, he's going to keep it himself. Has the first down. Still on his feet and driven to the mat at the 29-yard line. A gain on the play of 12. 
I was going to say, or be denied. Yeah. Sure. And, you know, it, 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 this is the point in the game where the Eagles, defensively, they've shown a lot of courage. Now they need a playmaker. And you get inside, and they had a chance to make a play, and they didn't. Jolon Dunbar gets blocked by the tight end, yep. but then recovers. Yep. Good eyes. You got guys bouncing off. And off Barkley again on first and ten, and uh, not much running room there. He ran headlong into B.J. Raji, the sophomore defensive tackle from Washington Township, New Jersey, who wanted to be a basketball star. But uh, they turned him into a football player, and a good one he is, Brian Toll. He's been interesting. Power forward at 340 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> He's been, been All right, who bound, guards bound him? Rebound. <laughs> and what Barkley did was incredible. That, folks, would have been world class. Second down and 10. Randolph back to throw. Pass tipped and nearly picked off. Kevin Akins picked it up off the ground. Randolph's ball, though, was tipped by possibly Raji. We'll take a look. These are the little things. The way you, you get back in a ball game, you get a tip. You, you, you know, you get a little bit of movement. That's a great bull rush. And we talk about those things that don't often make the highlights, but they'll make the coaches' highlights. That was a big play up front. That, that was Nick Larkin. Yeah, Nick Larkin came in. Big play. Third down and 10 coming. Wake Forest needs one here. Looking for the end zone. He's got a man there. Martin complete for the touchdown. Nate Martin on a play that covers 29 yards. And Wake Forest has six more points on the board. Big Nate. He's a baller, folks, and here's why. That offensive line, splendid protection. Man on man. Again, you can pick out your cuff links, tie the whole nine yards as a quarterback. He knew he'd get hit. He held on. Great throw and catch. The Demon Deacons are for real. Nate Morton with a 29-yard reception. Here's the kick by Swank, and it is good. And Wake Forest extends their lead to 17. A stunned crowd. Rain soaked here at Chestnut Hill looking in as Nate Morton adds on to the misery. Ace Tech. Wake Forest, 17 to nothing over Boston College as Sitco presents ACC football from Jefferson Pilot Sports. Nate Morton just scored the most recent touchdown, a 29-yard touchdown pass from Corey Randolph, which is his fourth of this season. And Corey Randolph now has 15 career touchdown passes for Wake Forest. He was the starting quarterback in his redshirt freshman year into his sophomore year, yielded the position to Ben Mock, or actually split it. And then he and Ben Mock, well, the handoff was to Mock at the beginning of the season, but Randolph, after the team started one and three, came in and has played well. And the win over Clemson. In the loss to Florida State narrowly, and then, of course, he's played so far very well in this first half here against Boston College. This is Blackman. Will Blackman, he can fly. But there'll be no fly this time. He finds Stanley Arnoux. And Arnoux on the tackle. Let's play some football. Be sure to stop in at your local record store and get the latest album from country music's hottest duo. Hillbilly Deluxe from Brooks and Dunn has already climbed to number one on the country charts. Their hit single, Play Something Country, which we use to get us going each and every week, is also number one. Their 23rd number one hit. Right now, Boston College looking for a hit. Let's play some football. And Blackman with a nice pass. A flag coming in on the tackle by John Abadi. This will add yardage to the play, and Blackman's down on the field. He's getting up slow. It's either a grab of the shoulder pad or the yeah, face, face mask. mask. Unintentional, but devastating to the recipient. I mean, it, there's no way about it. Guy can see how it mean to. Boy, that hurts. No foul. Face mask. Number 40 on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Now, BC is. Well, watch this play again. Body middle linebacker showing you his range. Good move, good idea. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's tough. That's clear face. That's man. tough. Yeah, great call. Yep. Great call. You, you have to. You got to.
got to protect the kids out here, and this is, again, you know, not intentional, but it doesn't matter. It still hurts. Well, second straight week that Boston College has kind of been victimized by a, either a late hit or a questionable hit yeah. long after. That face mask coming there, and, of course, the chop block on Kiwanuka last week by Brad Butler of Virginia. First and ten. BC at the Wake Forest 47. Play action for Quentin Porter. Pass is out there incomplete. It's intended for Lilly. Now we talked about Matthias Kiwanuka. Here's what happened last week. Brad Butler chopped him there. This is the actual play. This is the play whistle. Yep. See, whistle cut. Whistle cut. That's the bad part. Yep. You know, after the play. And then Al Washington is ejected from the game when he spears butler in retaliation and uh he leaves kiwanuka not playing neither is washington this week brad butler from virginia suspended for a week by the acc yeah went by his coach yep quarter pass to miller will it be complete no oh uh, but you got to give him credit though for the showmanship afterwards I mean, he knew that ball he hit the ground but being the tight end you know brainiac <laughs> you know, the high IQ guys, he still tried to pull it off. <laughs> I got to give him credit for this one. Yeah. The catch, he knew he lost it. Comes up, hey, hey I got it. It's fine. And Doc could have laid out that well. Way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, it's a great Watch call. it come up, though. See? Yeah. Look at that. Boy, that's talent. Yeah. That's talent. <laughs> Spoken like a true tight end. That's talent. Two uh -huh. for four, third down for the Eagles. At the Wake Forest, the 48. Order in some sort of trouble. Looking to direct the troops. Oh, no, and boy, that's dangerous. Yeah, that was because <laughs> Smith almost had his second pick of the day. It's intended for Black. Yeah, they're trying to do, you know, and they have a lot of pride. They have a good football team. And Boston College, is, their offense, is, they're pressing right now. They're a running team. They had 17 yards total prior to that drive. You get down any more than 17, you forget the run. Yeah, the day. They, they've got to still do what they do best. And that's pound the football. Keep their composure. That was not a good drive. Johnny Ayers will punt it away to Idolette. It's lots of time to do it. And this is a nice punt. A nice punt that'll be brought down at the nine yard line. It's a it's a 34 yard punt. However, there is a flag on the play. And it is running just, into the kicker, number 44 on the defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Now this is a 38-yard punt. It may be declined because they've got weight pinned up. Well, let's see what the decision is here for. Because this will not give Wake Forest first down. Boston College may yeah, decline so you this give them, You want to give a bad field position. Yeah, because, I, you know, you punt it again. I don't know. 50-50. It may be amazing what O'Brien does here if he elects it. And they're going to... They're going to accept the penalties. Yep. Sick the defense out. Mr. Poslowski must be in the locker room right now. You know, it's amazing. These rain games and the guys like Casper the Ghost. <laughs> we haven't heard from him. Where is he? I, would, I, need, a, I need a field condition report. <laughs> All right. They're going to they're gonna take the punter off the field, and they're going to go for first down. On fourth down and five, they're going to use this opportunity. Yeah. They field the field position. Well, I like this. Wake Forest has started at the 45-yard line all day anyway. Porter back to throw. Porter. No, it's through the hands of Lester. Catchable ball. He should have made the it's catch. It's still a good call. Yes. It's a great call. The offensive line did its thing. The execution's there. I mean, the coaches can't, can't catch. They can't throw it and catch it. Porter did his job. Ball was there. And he was trying to thread the needle. He was tentative on the throw, but he got it there. And Lester can't get farther away from anybody no. on that bench. You got to make the play. Yep. That was a first down yeah. pass. When Porter disappointed at the result of that play. Here's our scoreboard. Mississippi. Ball game. Trying yeah. to fashion an upset over Alabama. Texas Tech and Kansas no chain. And now, now Kansas yeah, steps Kansas ahead of Red Raiders. James. Michigan State by a field goal. Our game continues on here. This is Barclay dances out of the hole and forces Jamie Silver to come up and make a tackle along with uh, Ricky Brown. And that was a play that looked like it was going nowhere. Winds up six yards downfield. I call this this is a this is a potential twister now. Twisters when you put your foot on the opponent's neck and twist. Because when you fail on fourth down and one, they're demoralized now. If Wake Forest can stick this in the end zone, buddy, you won't have to worry about a traffic jam to the airport. 
<laughs> That's right. We won't. And we're in the first half. Randolph hands off Barclay, finds some room, and he's got Boston College catching now. At the 45 yard line of BC, Jamie Silva makes another tackle. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I mean, BC and their defensive line, they're accustomed to being in an attack mode where they go and they capture the line of scrimmage and they put pressure on offense. You said it best, partner. They're catching things now. And they're catching it going, and Wake Forest is going downhill. And that's a good thing. Oh, the reverse. This is Morton, who's already scored a touchdown, but a good diagnosis by Kevin Akins, a redshirt freshman from Lansdale, Pennsylvania. And it's uh, not for much yardage here, about two yards. Let's go to the sideline. Scott Prizwanski, we've located Oh, him. he's out the locker room. Good. Maybe. Scott? Oh, yeah, maybe we thought. Okay. We thought. Scott, are you We there? interrupted his chili. He had great chili here at BC. Uh, no. I'm sure he was back up here indulging in, it, indulging in the chili. Second down and seven. We have a technical difficulty on the mic. Randolph grabbed by Brian Toll. He is brought down for a loss of one. Taji Morris also on the top. Oh, there is. Oh, Scott. He is. oh okay. But uh, right. you All just right. can't shout loud enough. <laughs> Microphone doesn't work. We He's, can out. Just, He's out. We're just going to keep him on camera Let's and emasculate him. Some shoes, him. though. Yeah. We want to see the new shoes. Down to the shoes. Yeah. Going to see how wet those shoes. are. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, really nice. no Gore-Tex on the yeah, shoe. No Gore-Tex. Third down, seven. Wake Forest at the BC 42. Randolph back to play. Passes over the head of Kenneth Moore. Coverage, coverage on the corner by Kevin Akins. Yeah, Akins was right in the spot. He was in the spot for an interception. And that's what you have to think now for Boston College. It's no longer good enough at this point to get a stop. They need to, to take the ball away. They got to get some life into their offense. Yeah, they got to get some field position, too. Yeah. They're not going to get any out of this, but they're going to get the ball back. But they got to stop, which yeah. is significant. They did. Significant. They, you know, ruination is one word that comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't get a stop on that play, and, and, and the exodus that you spoke of could have happened. Plackemeyer wants to plant this one. And it's going to fall dead right down at the 10. It'll be a 35-yard, 36-yard nice. pimp. So he does his job. Andrew Cooper Tires Ultimate Bowl Tour, and you could win a trip for you and three of your friends to five of college football's best bowl games, all on a private jet. For official rules, go to a Cooper dealer or visit ultimatebowltour.com. Well, Boston College gets the ball back. They dodged a bullet of sorts that time. They went for it on fourth and five, gave up field position, and now they have negative field position, but they have the football. Yeah, they got the football back. And the, and the scoreboard didn't I, check. I was all for that fourth and one. It was a gut check, and they did everything but execute the play. First and ten. BC at their own 10. Porter back to throw. Pass is no drop by Lester again as he brought it in. Now, this probably wouldn't have gone for much, but it would have kept him on schedule. It's confidence. Well, they went back to him. They went back to him, which is a good thing. I mean, he's a good player. So you don't just drop everything on the kid. He's a second leading receiver. So you go back to him. The ball may have been a little high, but you got to get over it. Boston College is too good, too much experience for them not to be able to bounce back. BC under 30 total yards of offense so far in this first half. Quarterback to throw. Has a pocket. Now it closes down, and he'll have to scramble out of there. Took him a while to get the speed and an intuitive play by Quentin Porter to pick up the first down for Boston College. See, he showed you something. He showed you some competitive juices flowing. You could have timed him with an hourglass, <laughs> but he got the job done, and that's all that matters because that nearly collapsed. And then he got it going. And this is what Boston College needed. He even got a little hit at the end. So somebody, you know, tested. You, you got to play this game with a high level of emotion. And they're in a fog right now, a major league funk. First and 10 from the 21-yard line. Back to throw, Porter, pass complete. This is going to be Gonzalez. And Gaddis will pull him down. And he's got the first down at the 32-yard line. So it's a gain of 11 on the play. I like Gonzalez because he's a guy who just comes up, makes plays for you. And when I mentioned competitive juices flowing, well, you need your skill guys. BC, they're oblivious to the weather. They're throwing it, man, like it's 80. 
degrees out here, and they they expected to make plays. Back to throw. Porter again throwing on every down. This is Soleil. And Soleil is out to the 49 yard line and that's the most successful BC play offensively of the afternoon. It's a 16 yard pickup again Gaddis on the tackle. It's all about confidence when you practice in this weather you're supposed to perform in the weather. The visitors shouldn't have an advantage and this is what Boston College is showing now that they do practice outside. They're tough and now mentally are they going to be strong enough to prevail and get back in this ball game. First sustained march of the day. Porter again throwing pass is complete but it is fumbled challenger that was the intended receiver and Curry blows the play up a huge hit and I think that was a body on the hit Curry covered up on the ball but challenger comes limping to the side even if you didn't see it you could say a body was there and chances are you'd be right well that's Curry. he's close to it Curry with the rat a tat tat <laughs> a body nearly with the recovery collision oh, oh my goodness. That's football, folks. Porter back to throw. Lester this time. He's got a sure hold on it for a gain of about five at the 46-yard line. Tackling on the play, Alfonso Smith, who's already picked off a pass this afternoon. That's on your quarterback. You have to get the ball down so guys can catch and run when you're trailing. The catch is not good enough. They need a catch and a run on top of it. Don't look now, Doc, but I think the rain is starting to let up. Porter. Calls his own number and is again close to another first down. About to say, I thought he slid short, but again, he's starting to get into the flow. Aaron Curry on the stop. Close captioning for today's telecast is provided by SK, America's men's store. And uh, you can see the amount of rain we've had to put up with, but the raindrops aren't as frequent there. Here on fourth and short, Boston College goes for it again, and they get it. But well, now you're playing in their wheelhouse. Yeah. And with their offensive line, you know, they eat those alive. That's like a whale with a tic tac. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bad visual on that one. <laughs> First and 10. <laughs> 39 yard line. Porter, pass. Oh. It is intended for Lilly. BC wants a penalty, but it's good coverage on the play by Riley Swanson. Break on the ball is what it's all about. I still think ball was late. The ball was late. You get there a little sooner, you get the possession catch. Next, I'll look for that little slanting up because they're starting to get a rhythm again, as you mentioned, being on schedule. Wake Forest calls for a timeout with 3.31 left to go. They've got BC slightly off schedule here. Let's see what happens. That's Wake Forest leading Boston College 17 nothing. Combo. Wake Forest leading Boston College as Sitco presents ACC football from Jefferson Pilot Sports. The rain has let up somewhat. We are looking for clearing as the day goes along. BC looking at second down and 10. They're in Wake Forest territory at the 40. Blitz is on. Porter's pass complete to Miller, the tight end. Shakes a block but gets only three yards when all is said and done. Riley Swanson, Aaron Curry, and Brian Andrews are over there to cover for Wake Forest. Wake Forest sent some pressure. John Abadi, middle linebacker, was in. He was leading the charge. Look He's, at this. Look at that. They've outscored opponents in the first half, but not today. Porter on third down. Looking downfield has Lester. Wide open. Lester in the end zone. Touchdown, Boston College. There it is, partner. It had to happen. I thought it would be a slant and go. 38 yards, throw and catch. And just like that, the Eagles are playing up to their ability. And they're faithful. 37-yard touchdown catch. Good pass offense. Has a wrinkle. I was waiting on it. I thought it would be the slant up. This time, they took it in and out. Either way, the results are positive for Boston College. William Troost on for the point after as Larry Lester hauls it in. His first down and touchdown of the year, but his eighth career touchdown for Boston College. Wake Forest University. 
small in size. Big in resources. Tall among national universities. Wake Forest University. Boston College is the newest member of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Not only do we bring our nationally ranked teams to the ACC, we bring a high standard of academic excellence, renowned faculty research and teaching, and award-winning student achievement. We bring more than 140 years of our Jesuit Catholic tradition of liberal arts education and service to others, and one of America's most vibrant cities with its limitless opportunities. We're Boston College, a great tradition and even greater future. Wake Forest now has a partner on the scoreboard as Boston College gets their first score of the day with 254 left. It was an 11 play march. It went 90 yards started at their own 10 a 37 yard touchdown strike to Larry Lester the fifth year senior out of Piscataway New Jersey in for Quentin Porter. It was his 21st career touchdown pass. There you see it How about a bit of redemption. For Lester, yes, on that fourth and uh, and, that fourth. and one, he dropped that. He came back, but he persevered. Came up, big play. He caught two passes in that drive. The second one, of course, the touchdown, and then Quentin Porter got a big rush for a first down to keep the drive alive. Yeah, two runs for first downs. Oliger with the kick. This is Marion coming back the other way for Wake Forest, up the center of the field, and he dices his way out to the 33-yard line. Let's look at the touchdown again from ground level. Whenever you hit the short and immediate pass, it sets yourself up. They're waiting on those corners to bite. And it, they had played well for Wake Forest, Smith and Swanson. And there's Lester on the sidelines. I can see those seniors per, you know, persevere. They've been through a lot. Had a heck of a career. You want to end it on an up note. First and ten. Oh, there's movement. Wake Forest went well before the snap. And now... It looks like it's the Deacons' turn for mistakes. Wake, Wake Forest has been in more than this year. Yeah. Game. We're having trouble with any communication at the field this afternoon. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference is prohibited. And Jefferson Pilot Sports today. And we thank you. First and 15. Red Eagles, you can sense it. They, they see light at the end of that tunnel, climbing out of the cave. Here comes the orbit sweep fake, and it's going to be Barclay. And he finds tough yardage, maybe a yard. Ron Brace. Who's backing up Al Washington at that defensive tackle playing in place of Washington today makes the stop for Boston College. Do you see, oh, go ahead. Excuse me, Steve. You see the animation though? You see Boston College a little more jump, a little more in the knee, bend yep. the knees a little more. That's the level of excitement they've got to play with. Play action and around. It's Rorton. He had an option to throw, but Jamie Silva blows it up after a one yard gain. And this is more like the team that is fourth in the country against the rush. There you go. Freshman, Jamie Silva. It's all about attitude. You know, defensively, you know, you can be placed in the right spot, but no one can crank your engine up but you. You got to go in there with reckless abandonment, and that's exactly what Jamie Silva showed us. And it's not the first time he showed us. Boston College will use a timeout here as they have Wake off schedule. Jamie Silva from East Providence, Rhode Island. He and Will Blackman have a... A little bit of history together because they played at competing high schools in Rhode Island and they've become good friends. Competitors against each other. On many of these same stations next week, you'll see more ACC football as we'll take you to Chapel Hill. Keenan Stadium for the arch rivalry between the Virginia Cavaliers and the North Carolina Tar Heels. It's one of the oldest standing rivalries in the ACC. And we'll get it on starting at noon on most of these same stations. And some of you will see ACC football today a half hour before our noon kickoff. Now, I'd be real conscious right now of Kevin Marion. Yeah. Because he is the one guy, along with Barclay, 
on Wake's side that can beat you in one play. I mean, this guy can flat out fly. And BC right now, Frank Spaziani has things figured out as yep. far as Barkley on the yep. run. They've seen a lot of the playbook now. Uh -huh. Wake needs something a little bit different here to jazz it up. Well, Frank's done a great job, Spaziani and his whole staff, because they're playing shorthanded. But the intensity has picked up. Here's the screen to Barkley. Barkley has running room and gets out to about the 40. He's going to be shy of the first down. Ball was loose, but it's blown dead at the 41. It'll be a gain on the play of 11. Dewan Tribble in on Boy, the stop. Wesley Bryant, left tackle, 300-pounder that you're watching with the slip. Now he's coming up left side of your screen. Watch him zero in, get the pancake block. R.B. Jones made some contact. Great execution on the side of the Demon Deacons. But I just I can't emphasize defensively how important that intensity, that attitude you play with. Do you see Big West? Now, Boston College has called another timeout. Bryant, he's got some size on him. 300, 6'4", fifth-year senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Now he's a big one. Now, BC has called another timeout. They have one remaining, and they want to save as much of the clock and get another score on the board. And they have a minute and 58 when they get it back from this punt, supposedly. They want, they want to stop the momentum. Yes, they BC do. now to feel offensively you're feeling good the crowd back into it stop the momentum I think start the momentum on there oh, yes it will then they're in trouble they've, they've the stopped Eagles it trouble. now now they got to start it started in their direction so uh, Ryan Plackemeyer will come out again and Ryan can be unfettered now because the rain is let up it's still coming yeah. but it's lighter than it has been well, see, this while. is where the Blackman factor comes in yes and what he represents as a playmaker and how Wake Forest, you, you better stay in your lanes. Coverage is premium. Blackemeyer's average close to 40 a kick. There's Blackman, one of the best kick and punt returners in the country. And a boomer by Blackemeyer. Blackman runs into his own interference and just runs out of real estate. Yeah, he couldn't get any help. He had no. spectators. He needed helpers. He needed blockers. Well, last year down in Winston-Salem, down 14 to 10 with just a minute to play. Now well, the Demon Deacons work their magic. Corey Randolph looking for Willie Idolette and connects on this 42-yard touchdown strike. Wake Forest would beat Boston College 17 to 14 for the second straight season and the second straight season that Wake Forest scored in the final minute and a half of play. Wake Forest is in more tight games in the fourth quarter than any team we've seen you know, over the years. They're going to be in it right until the end. First and ten, Porter back to throw, pass through the hands of his tight end, and that is Ryan Purvis. The backup tight end, third on the depth chart. Aaron Curry covering on the play. Another rare moment in college football. Oh, yeah, right, tight end drops a pass. Yeah, no, they don't, we don't drop them. They, you, you miss one. Oh, yeah. It's First. a difference. You know, sun, rain in your eye, all kind of factors. You know, I was a tight end in high school. Well, that means you're part of the fraternity. <laughs> Pass is complete to Calendar. Out on the wing. He dropped the ball at the end, but it's ruled down at the 25-yard line. Jeremy Thompson out there to stop the play after about a four-yard gain. And it'll bring up third down. So critical now. The difference of going in 17-7, 17-14, 17-10. Porter, Lester, juggles the ball and comes down with it for the first down for Boston College at the 45-yard line. But now, yeah, that's complete. Let me see that again. Dave Parenter, let me see that one again, man. Boy, just when you think you've seen it all, you are in hostile area here in the middle. With those safeties and the way they hit, oh, he got that, man. Well, we may be reviewing this play. I think I'm out. Because he, he, he's got it on the side of his helmet. Well, your helmet counts. Well, uh, as long as he's not, he jumped, he had possession. He pinned it on to his headgear. It's called using your head. Tom to Joseph now talking it over. Watch this again. Juggle. Juggle. So many times he could have been blown up right there. He's got it. Ball hits. He didn't lose it. He couldn't lose it because the ground was there. Well, the ground, yeah. And that's what the ruling was. They're not even going to review this. They're going to send it back and call it incomplete. Oh, man. Well, you know. That happens. Now, wait. We may see a review. 
And as a matter of fact, he is going to review it. It's easy when we get a second and third look at it. Key is, did he lose the ball? He had that right paw right on the ball, pressed it against his helmet. Interesting. Tom Joseph is going to review it, and there's Tom O'Brien's reaction to the play, to the call by the official. Ray Henderson standing next to him. And here's the review. Middle linebacker. I mean, he's the volatile side of your team. <laughs> Now, especially on BC, they've got oh, some great ones. Oh yeah, they're, always they're, kids. Pete Cronin, my old teammate in Washington, who uh -huh. does radio here, talk about a caveman. Here's another look at it. Now the question is, does that constitute possession? And then what happens here? He hits the ground. The ball hits the ground. Now he's down. Yeah. The ball. He never lost. He never lost control possession or possession of the ball. Now the official could say, the replay official could say, well. He never got a chance to lose control. That's true. Did we get Scott hooked back up? I mean, is he still in the lunchroom? He's standing about five feet in back here, actually. Oh, he's up here. No, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, this guy, what a what, what a piece of work. Here's you the know? call. Here's the call. <laughs> Insufficient evidence to overrule the call. The play stands as called. It's an incompleted pass. And you know who had it? Our statistician, Arthur Katz, had it right on the button. Well, that's why and I waved him is. off. I pushed him out that's of the booth. That's why he's who he is. He was the only one up here who said it was incomplete. I didn't believe it. But I like a guy who can call it right the first time. That's right. True leader when you take unpopular, make unpopular decisions. Johnny Ayers. And oh, that is blocked. That's Smith. He's already intercepted a pass today. He gets a punt block, and Wake Forest takes the initiative at the 13-yard line, and they have a minute to go in his first half. Boy, seldom do you see a team beaten in all three facets of a game. But this first half is all about the black and gold. Take it right off the foot, why don't you? Wow. And then nearly scored. I mean... The, the Demon Deacons, and that, you know, they, they, they gained a lot of confidence down in Florida State, even more confidence as they beat the Clemson Tigers. But this group here, boy, they seem bent on success. Wake Forest comes out first and 10. They're at the Boston College 14-yard line. Almost an exchange problem. Here is Randolph, and he slides out of the tackle of Nick Larkin and down to the eight-yard line. Let's take a look at our call to recycle.org red zone. Wake Forest for the season offensively, 25 times they've had it. They've only scored 15. You like to have that percentage up to 70% if you can. Ten of those have been touchdowns, so the ratio touchdown to field goals is good. They just need a few more hits. Randolph has time, looking for the corner, and... Uh, that's going to go out of bounds. He was looking for Demir Bolden. Yeah, they were just not on the same page on that no. one with Selwyn. And here's BC Bolden, in defense on our call to recycle.org red zone chart. 15 times opponents have been there, and they've scored 66% of the time, almost even touchdowns to field goals. So BC's done pretty well defensively when you get down hemmed up in the short field. Already they've held Wake Forest to a field goal at the one. We have a timeout call by Wake Forest with 31 seconds left to play. Wake now down to their final timeout. So much has happened here, Doc, in the last two minutes. Uh, it well, looked like all of a sudden BC had lifted the veil of... Uh, yeah. One time I, I thought you know, maybe 17-10, 17-14 could be 27 now. Yeah. Or, or worse. And that's the beauty of this. Uh, I, I, I've never felt that the Eagles were out of it once their offense shows some life the defense have played well you talked about the four points they saved here uh, earlier they could wake could make three of those points up now with a field goal but there's nothing nothing you can be guaranteed with this weather condition Tom O'Brien is still talking to Tom Joseph as you look at the Atlantic Division standings you see the importance of this game now Boston College has already lost to Florida State they can't afford many more losses and stay in this chase for the Atlantic Division title and here's Wake Forest. They're only this is only their fourth conference game. They win this game. They're two and two, and you can move them up ahead of Clemson in the conference standings right now. And it's all about going to Jacksonville, right. playing that first That's game. That's right. And Maryland's idle. 
today, and they've got Virginia Tech next Thursday yes. night. So what a huge lot, game that yeah, is. Big one, big one at Bird. Of course, uh, later on this season, Maryland has a big trip to Tallahassee, and uh, they're the next team in the division that has a shot at Florida State. And that's going to be a tough team to corral. Third down now, and nine. At the BC 12 yard line. Marion in motion, inside hand up Barclay, full back out in uh, protection, but Ray Henderson snuffs out the play for a loss of one. You seem almost reserved. I thought that, again, Marion, I'm waiting to see if Marion gets the football in his belly again. How can you go wrong going against Barclay? Just Boston College just extends itself real well. But Great they, defense. But that, that little orbit, boy, it was there. Yep. It, it, I, I just love to see him with the football. And that, that's something that, you know, and, and Wake, will call, Wake will let you see that a couple of times. Uh -huh. It's a question of when you're going to get it. Second half. Yep. Timeout now. Called by Wake Forest again. They've used their final timeout. They're looking at fourth and 11. They want to get the kicking unit on it, apparently. Or let's see what they do here. Yep, Swank is going to come out and try to kick the field goal as Randolph comes to the sidelines. When is Randolph going to start playing like he's a former wide receiver? <laughs> I mean, look at this kid's three weeks as a starter. Yeah. He's uh, been 75% of his passes yeah, have been caught. Smoking. Yes, he is. All right, 32 yard field goal attempt from the right hash mark here for Sam Swank, who's already hit a 21 yarder. He is 10 for 14 this season. Got good range at 51 yards. Won't need that. And the wind will be coming right at him. And now a timeout called by Boston College. They want to add to the suspense here. So they'll come over and use their final timeout. There's only one second left in the half. This will be the final play of this wild first half. A first half that could be 17-14 at this time. It also could have been 24-0. And let's not forget, Wake Forest won the toss, elected to kick, Boston College fumble, so Wake gets it back after the intermission. That's so right. they've got a chance they put points on the board to come back and still have an offensive possession. So this is critical for Boston College success is to nullify this or, or hope like the Dickens they don't succeed. Well, the elements are kicking in. We've got rain, and now it's starting to get a little bit heavier now as the skies darken. We've had a wind that is not much of a factor down at this end of the field because of the fact that they are down behind that uh, protective. Now, that's the wind above the stadium, but down where on the ground level where they are, uh, the indicators at the top of the goalpost are hardly moving. Blackemeyer to hold, Sam Swank to kick. This is a 32 yard attempt. Ball is down tepidly, and the kick is good. That's a big time kick. And that's a big time hold by Ryan Plackemeyer, who caught a bow yeah. on the ground and got a nice hold for Sam Swank, who gets the kick away, a second field goal of the day. And Wake Forest takes a 20 to 7 lead here at halftime. Here's the kick. Look at the grab by Plackemeyer. And right at the angle, Swank slices the goalposts. And Wake Forest now up and causing a shockwave as they try to upset 14th ranked Boston College here at the half. Swank headed to the locker room. We're going to take a break as long as well. Scott Brzezwanski in halftime coming your way next with Wake Forest up 20 to 7. ACC football is brought to you by. Geico by Toyota by Bell South by Progress Energy by Sonic Drive-In and by Sitco elements today we'll see that Corey Randolph and Quentin Porter have uh, battled off pretty well Corey Randolph getting the the better of it early on as you look at the stands they're starting to it's not that the people aren't here as you pan down you'll see the the, the fans are under the overhang but here's what the quarterbacks have done can you blame them no i can't blame them. a good percentage by Corey randolph who came in here completing uh 75 percent of his passes he's thrown a touchdown today for quentin porter took him a while to get started he's got a touchdown but he's also thrown a pick so far in this ball game 
Uh, Boston College uncharacteristically has committed three turnovers in their first five possessions of the day. And there's Quentin Porter. He'll have to wait a spell because Wake Forest is going to get the ball back here. Corey Randolph, the red shirt, uh, he's the uh, fifth year senior out of Lake City, Florida. And Porter, fifth year senior out of Portland, Maine. So first Randolph. possession, first five minutes of the third quarter. Very, very important that a Wake Forest doesn't turn it over no change of sudden change of possession don't you know put another log in the fire get into Barclay and really start showing off your ability to run the football Ryan Oliger getting ready to kick the ball away and Kevin Marion is back deep D'Angelo Bryant the shallow receiver for Wake Forest Boston College was held to the fewest rushing yards in the first half in five years when they were held to minus four yards in the first half against West Virginia. And in this first down, they were held to zero yards on nine rushes. Kick is going to be fielded by McWhite. And that is the fullback, and he slips and slides to the 18 yard line. Let's look at the first half possessions of these uh, two teams for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons as they gather around Jim Grobe and his staff, Steve Lebowski. Offensive coordinator. The field goal, of course, came as a result of the fumbled opening kickoff. Then touchdowns quickly cashed in. One on the fumble at the one yard line. Corey Randolph back to throw. Out in the flats, it is complete. The bar play, and there's a, a stop right there. And that is going to be Dewan Tribble. Tribble, a sophomore out of Cincinnati, making the stop. Well, we gave you that 2.6 yards per play on first down. It was an aid for Wake Forest in the first half, and they kept the ball forever, 19 minutes possession. That's a good start for the Eagles. Well, actually, Wake Forest on first down had 5.1 offensively, so they're off schedule a little bit here. Plenty of time here, and a ball dropped by Barclay. Same play again over to the wing. Kind of look like how they started. Uh, their first drive, it resulted in three points, but it was a 10-play drive. Started with two penalties. Yep. And they just couldn't get started. They, they, and were, they made a play. They were down, Doc, at the 30-yard line of BC, backed up to their own 40, and then came back downfield to settle for the field goal yep. inside the 10. Big catch on that play by Bolden. Yep. Back to throw is Randolph. Steps up and won't get away. It's going to be Ramella, Jim Ramella, the true freshman from Westlake, Ohio. Who gets the sack? That is the 16th sack of the season for BC. They are fourth best in the ACC in putting the quarterback on his back. And that says a heck of a lot when you have Kiwanuka and Washington both out. Coming on the outside, boy, you talk about a bull rush. He blew fellows up. I mean, that's blowing up a good football player. Come out in half, determined to bring about change. Boston College now about to get good field position as Plackemeyer's four yards deep in his end zone for the punt. Will Blackman, three yards in his own territory at midfield. Wake tightens this thing up now. And now we've got a whistle and a flag is going to be thrown. It's a good kick by Plackemeyer. I mean, the thing went about 65 yards. Play of game on the offense, number 81. Couldn't get that shift executed, so this will put Blackemeyer now nine yards deep in his end zone to kick. I mean, he's good, but you don't want to put him in a tougher situation than need be. Protection, boy, you can't stress protection more, and there's the playmaker, Blackman. Let's see if Wake changes their splits now. Here comes the kick. This one's not as good as the first one. It takes a gratuitous Wake Forest bounce. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh. <laughs> this guy, what a punter. 42 to midfield and over 50, close to 60 yards on the kick by Blackemeyer. BC has the ball. Today's game is brought to you in part by Nissan and your local Nissan dealer. Neither rain nor wind. Or any other element that you can introduce will 
alter the enthusiasm of the Eagles fans who have the ball now. BC back at their own 33 yard line after a 62 yard kick by Blackamire. Pass complete on the fringe to Blackman and he falls on loose footing out to the 37 yard line. A gain of four. Alfonso Smith covering on the play and here's what happened to Boston College and on top of that a fumble on the opening kickoff they have three other turnovers plus a block punt and one touchdown that one to Larry Lester of 37 yards for a score for Quentin Porter fifth year senior out of Portland Maine second down and five pass out there is knocked away defended and does Wake Forest come up with it? A body thinks he does. It's going to be incomplete. Alfonso Smith covering on the play as well intended for Blackman again on the flats. I think Coach Bible has said we're going to go to our go-to guy. See if he can make a play. And I like that. Good but coverage. You just look at the, the game thus far that Smith has had. With the punt and the interception, Alfonso Smith is in the zone. That's his, he's playing. That's his third pass defended this yeah, afternoon. He's playing it. Third, the beast is always by the football. That's right. Body. Third down. Pocket collapses. Pass intended for Lester off his shoulder. And he was out there all alone. So maybe the first half drops have not eluded Larry Lester. Well, Larry, just, you know, you start to press. I mean, everyone wants to play well, especially a senior. Coach O'Brien keeps his team outdoors. They practice like Spartans. I mean, they don't, they're not in a bubble. And that's why I think they have a chance to come back in this game because they're accustomed to these conditions. But they just got to make some plays. That's the sixth drop ball by Boston College. Johnny Ayers out of Oakton, Virginia is in. Willie Idolette and the near block. Yeah. Riley Swanson. Swanson, what a slip move. Fair catch called for at the 18 by Idolette. And that's where Wake Forest will have it first and ten. Hungry for a big win? Enter at MillionNuggets.com for a chance to win one of over 15,000 Chick-fil-A small nugget trays at a chance at one of 13 grand prize trips to the 2005 ACC championship game where you'll compete for a chance to throw for one million dollars. First 300,000 to register. Get a coupon for a free Dr. Pepper. Register at MillionNuggets.com before October 29th. First and ten, Wake Forest working from their own 18-yard line. Second possession of this second half. They lead 20 to 7. Barclay, the lone setback. Play action for Randall. Pass is dropped. This time, the Callahan. tight end. Callahan. Yep, Callahan drops the ball. Again, another rarity. Daniel Callahan with a drop. It's just that position. You just don't see this happen often. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't, do you, Doc? You just don't. No. Second and ten. Did you ever drop any balls? I don't remember. <laughs> Part of getting hit in the head over the, over the years, you, your memory gets away from you. Low snap to Randolph. He'll scramble out. The pass is complete to Morton. He's shy of the first down and driven out of bounds at the 28 28 yard line he needed the 29 for a first Tyrone Pruitt defending on the play for Boston College the more you watch Nate Morton play the more you like it and like a lot of kids who make a position change but you know I think it's more it's tougher quarterbacks you know guys who want to get under center make up their mind to go play another spot and he's big and strong got good wheels great hands third down and one Chris Barclay, all of a sudden the hole opens up and he may be close to a first down. It'll be interesting to see what the mark is. Looking at what the linesman has him, it's going to be a first down. Jamie Silva, Dewan Tribble try to deny him that, but Barclay is all <laughs> determination. Uh, how do you coach this? There's just no way. I mean, Coach Mitchell spends a lot of time with this kid, but can you actually coach that? I mean, the kid, incredible feet, has a feel for it. Let's blocks set up. Boy, he'd be a joy to block for. This kid is good. First and 10 from the 29. Randolph, there's nothing there. This play broke down. Or did it? Morton catches it at the 43-yard line. A connection of 13 moves the chains again. I like, tell you what. Like a waggle to me. To me. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was naked that time. Hey, buddy. You got that line chasing. You know what? I'm going to go. If they design this. Then uh, Coach Lebowski, we have to we have to go out and have a hamburger with him because I want to see this 
Draw this up, show me this in black and white. <laughs> Man, that's a great action. And Randolph sold it all the way. Did First he, and ten. Did he get our camera guys? Though? I don't doubt that. And over reverse. This is Marion looking for a block at the corner, and he won't get it. Brian Toll hauls him out for a three-yard loss, and there is a flag on the play. Yeah, there was a strangling going on on that holding. This is Chris Barclay in the first half. He had uh, close to 78 yards rushing and a touchdown in the first half of play. The yardage has been a little bit harder here in the second, but Barclay, there you see his one touchdown. He took on five red shirts that time and got it in. 78 yards, 4.1 per tote, and a touchdown. Now let's see what the call is going to be. It's holding against Wake Forest. Their eighth penalty of the afternoon. And let's go back to the Florida State game where Barclay, the last series, was out with a tender ankle. So this kid, you know, it's, it, it may not be 100%, but you can't tell. So it's going to be first and 20 for Wake Forest. Backed up to their 33. Drive started at their own 19 as you look at Chris Barkley coming out. On the option. Randolph. And he's brought down by Ryan Glasper. Junior from Southington, Connecticut. Gain on the play of about three, pushes it out to the 35. Glass for Henderson, you know, these two guys in the middle, when you're playing that option, you're trying to read it. And he just goes in and squeezes the deal down. It's going to be second down and 18. There's Glasper right there. You have to tackle Will when you're going up against him. An, uh, an athlete like Random. And an option attack like Wake. Here's Barclay, and Henderson is there to put him down. A little bit of extra pushing on the play. It's out to the 38. It'll be a gain of three, and it'll bring up third and long again. This is Bolden time. I, I got the guy who has shown us an ability to make big plays. They've gone to the tight ends a couple of times. Henderson. Uh, yeah, he's here. not in. I think John's still. Yeah, he's still hurt. From a leg injury. Yeah, he's a good one. Wake Forest, seven of 15 on third down. They're facing third and long here. Need 13 for the first. Blitz is on. Randolph steps up. He'll run. And Henderson tries to get him, but he's going to be brought down shy of the first down at the 46-yard line. Brian Toll finishes off the play, and the punting unit will come on. Oh, Ray Henderson, man. He, I mean, this kid plays with great passion. I mean, he's a hit man. A little bit of a spy technique. And you, you watch him, and he's reading. And here he is on the chase. Now watch him come over. He's going to keep him inside that box and make sure he forces him in. Job well done. Ryan Plackemeyer on for the second time this half. Will Blackman waiting down just outside the 10-yard line. Plackemeyer has trouble with this kick. And it's going to go outside, and it's going to be one of his shortest kicks in quite That's a while. That's a first. <laughs> that is a first. Only a, oh, look at this. This is only a 20-yard punt. Wake Forest, 20 to 7. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents Atlantic Coast Conference football. Live from Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Steve Martin here with Rick Doc Walker and Scott Przewanski. It's a rainy day in Boston. The second straight rainy weekend for Boston College Eagle football. They've had nine straight days of rain here. First and 10, Boston College, their own 37. 20 to 7. Wake Forest in the lead. The pass complete to Gonzalez. Gonzalez on his way, and he's into Wake Forest territory. Marked out of bounds at the 46 yard line. Patrick G drove him out of bounds, but not before a big gain on the play. When in doubt, get the ball to Tony Gonzalez. Underneath, flat route, good hands. I mean, the kid knows how to move the sticks. It's a first down play, too, of 18 yards. It's the ninth first down of the day for Boston College. So they had first down yardage of only two and a half in the first half. Handoff goes to Andre Callender on only the 10th rush of this game for Boston College, but it's probably their most positive rush of the day. Out to the 42-yard line, a gain of four. Patrick G again on the tackle for the Demon Deacons. Two things you try to do. A, get your confidence back. Start to feel like you can move the football and then get back to what they're so accustomed to, and that's balance. Both defense have played well here in this third quarter. 
Second down and about five to go. Porter back to throw. Hit a couple of times, but he got it off and almost intercepted by Jason Pratt, senior from Hicks in Tennessee. A body got a hit on Porter as he let it go. Well, the one thing that I don't know if Boston College could have anticipated, and that is just relentless pressure. Now, if they went up sure, and they watched the Florida State film, where Weatherby, he was hit seven times he was on the turf with a helmet under his chin. So the film might have been a good precursor, but no matter what, this team, Wake Forest, has had pressure. On third down, pass is incomplete. Looks like a miscommunication. And now a late flag thrown in. Could be interference on John Abadi. Chris Miller, the intended receiver. BC came into that play three of nine on third downs, but this could be an important conversion, and it is against Wake Forest. Jim Grobe looking on. His team has fought well this afternoon. They've got a lead, but they're about to give up some field position. Jim's been on the other side of this so many times. He understands you can come back because his teams have come back. Yes. Pass interference on the defense, number 40. It's a spot foul, automatic first down. See the play again. Body there and you see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's into it. And the ball is it. Balls. Yeah, good call. Yeah, excellent call. You took Miller right out of it. And you're supposed to do it, shadow a guy. A body put a shoulder pad under his rib cage. <laughs> Middle linebacker. It results in a 12 yeah, yard game. Yeah. Probably a little bit too physical on that one. Good play action by Porter. Pass out there complete. Drop by Ryan Thompson. It was right in the midst. That's going to be the seventh drop ball for Boston College this afternoon. Yeah. As well as Wake Forest has played, BC has been its own worst enemy. There you get that movement again. You love it. Coach Bible has that team moving left. Tight end comes back right there. Wide open. Well thrown. Yeah. Yep. And that's a catch that, again, you can say it over and over. These guys have good hands. They just didn't bring them to work today. Second down. Porter has some time. A little flat pass out there to his fullback, Patty Lynch, and a great open field tackle made by Aaron Curry. Redshirt freshman out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Brings up third down. Let's take a look at our Aaron scoreboard. Alabama coming back, leading Ole Miss in the third. It's a ball game. Texas Tech has come back to lead Kansas by 11. And Michigan State staying a field goal ahead of Ohio State in the third at Columbus. And look at that. Minnesota, 27-17 against Wisconsin. Wow, BC three of nine on third down opportunities. See what happens now. On third down at about seven. Hit as he threw. Ball downfield. It is complete. And that is Lilly. Jason Lilly, the junior from Dover, Delaware. And he'll mark him down at the seven-yard line. Jason has been battling injuries. Pretty healthy on that. They had a double move. Really Wake Forest, two guys in the area just misjudged the football. First and goal. From the seven, Porter to throw. Has all the time in the world. Flag on the play. And he goes down to the four-yard line. Ball pops loose. Wake Forest says they have it. Let's see if the officials blew it down. It is, well, no. Referee has not made his signal yet. Now, is he saying Wake Forest? We have Definitely a flag. He lost the football. Yeah, he lost the football. A hold, and it doesn't matter what he did, because another miscue by Wake Forest on the fold will negate the turnover. Holding. On the defense, number 59, half the distance from the previous spot, the beat first down. Big break for Boston College on a penalty against Aaron Curry. And this gives him first down again instead of Wake Forest possibly getting the football. This thing is about to get a little tighter. Yeah, it really is. And 7.28 to go in the third, so they still have time. It's eighth play on this drive. 
We watched Wake Forest get down here and have to settle for three. Playing catch up, Boston College can ill afford that that trail. First and goal from the four, handoff calendar, and he's met. At about the three yard line, Jonathan Abadi in on the stop along with Jameel Smith. Let's look at this. This is the play that got him in position down here. Again, it was a, they've had real success with the pump and go. Jason Lilly. Boy, what a catch. Great catch. But again, you have two guys right in the vicinity. Patrick G could have been a decapitation shot, but he slipped. And he missed and he lost his shoe and in the cross. Shoe. Second down and goal. Here comes Porter to throw. And it's complete. Chris Miller deflected by a body, but Miller holds on in the end zone for the touchdown. Wow. When in doubt, go to the high IQ, guys. You need a play. Look at that offensive line. I mean, it buried people on the run. And you're right. That really had very little to do with Miller. It had to do with the body who had a chance at an interception. Great deflection. And I know that the folks at Boston College say, we will take it. Truce with the point after. Chris Miller with the touchdown. It's a four-yard connection from Quentin Porter through Jonathan Abadi. And then the touchdown by Chris Miller. Back after this word from your local ACC stations. There's the play, March. Eight plays, 63 yards, a two-yard touchdown reception by Miller. And the play was aided by two key Wake Forest penalties. One, an interference call that set up a 20-yard touchdown, 20-yard pass to Jason Lilly. And then Miller got his thing going. Oliger getting ready to kick it away. Kevin Marion back deep for Wake Forest. Slick field has claimed its victims this afternoon, but we've seen a good one between Wake Forest and Boston College. 20 to 17. 20 to 14, rather. Well, received on a fair catch and taken there by Sykes down at the 20-yard line. Well, during the first half, we asked this all tell text to win ACC Trivia Challenge. BC head coach Tom O'Brien was an offensive coordinator on which successful ACC coach? And the answer should have been A, George Welch of Virginia. Tune in next week for your chance to play text to win ACC Trivia Challenge presented by Alltel. There's Tom O'Brien. See what Wake Forest has in the tank here offensively as they look at first and 10 from their own 16 yard line. Barclay dances inside the protection out to the 19 yard line. It'll be a gain of about three on the play. And let's go to the sidelines right now. Scott Przewanski. You guys, you know, when it gets to be weather conditions like this, you're down by a couple scores. You turn to your seniors. And in Boston College, it's Patrick Ross. This guy really led the charge on that last drive. And he's the latest in the long line of offensive linemen that will be drafted. At least one has been drafted since 1999. He's a special player and is showing it in various ways here today. Second down and about seven. Who loses his footing and is tackled by Ray Henderson. Fifth year senior from Preskill, New Jersey. Makes the stop. And Wake has gone in reverse this entire third quarter. Okay, this is one of those plays that you can't categorize by X's and O's. This is desire. This is a pit bull attitude. Crawling. Here he goes. Takes the block. Keeps his feet. Now he dives. He crawls. He scratches to get to the quarterback. You know, his coaches say he's not fast enough, not strong enough, but he's good enough. Good enough. Yeah, absolutely. Randolph on the throw. Play as they were looking for Kenneth Moore on a little screen. And three and out. A rejuvenated Boston College defense. They can sense the tide turning. They're only six back and they're about to get the football back. You have to play smart football. That time defensively. Boston College did what they were taught all week long. Read your keys. They sensed it. Both guys on the outside linebacker saw the underneath screens, stayed on it, played disciplined defense, and as a result, they get another shot at the football. Blackemeyer to kick five yards deep in his end zone. Back deep, Will Blackman. Wow. Hangs wow. up. That's 55 yards right there. Just about. Actually, you've got to subtract a little bit of yardage, but Blackman, ball squirts loose, but it's ruled down at the Wake Forest 43 yard line. It's 
It's about a 38 yard punt and a nice return that time. Tackle made by Aaron Curry and Boston College will get their best field position to start a drive this game. And the Wake Forest 42. And that time of possession that Wake Forest dominated in the first half. Starting to swing. Pendulum swing in a bit. Three downs and out. Yep. Each of their two to one in the first half. Here's Porter. Handoff now goes to Whitworth. And Whitworth has some running room. And now the score is manageable so Dana Bible can go back to the running plays that BC uses so successfully. Riley Swanson drives Whitworth out. But not before he gains 19 yards down to the 23. Yeah, I mean, you can't give up a chunk like this on first down. Boy, that's good blocking up front. And down in the second level, when your receivers start chipping in, those backs can get big plays. Porter back to throw. Three-step drop. Has some time. Pass is complete. But not for much. And that goes Gonzalez. Yep, Gonzalez. He did all he could to catch that yeah. ball. It's underneath. I don't even have to see the number. I say Gonzalez. Gaddis in on the tackle. It is a gain of maybe a yard on the play. Brings up second down and about nine. Now the gut check goes to the Demon Deacons. Defensively, now someone has got to make a play if they're going to keep this advantage. And off Whitworth. Straight ahead. A little bit of running room inside the 20. Down to the 17 yard line. Jeremy Thompson in on the tackle. Now when push comes to shove, you bet on the Eagles offensive line, and here's why. 317 pounds, and they account for 171 yards per game. They've only allowed five quarterback sacks this season. Yeah, but that hasn't amounted to much so far. Nope. Now they're starting to try to live up to it. Order. That's old news. Plenty of time from that line. He has to get out of the pocket. Coverage is good on the secondary. He's going to be, uh, depending on the mark, about a yard shy of the first down. They're going to bring him back to the 15-yard line. A body makes the final tackle. And well, they've gone for this now twice, Stephen. Yep. Well, they have, he hasn't been shy. Coach O'Brien has been very aggressive. Well, he's going to manage his team. He's going to stay that way now, Doc, because they have made positive yardage on every play of this second half, and they feel no reason to think differently here. Whitworth the lone setback for Porter. Hand off Whitworth. He's got the first down. Really wasn't much of a gamble when you look at it that way. Curry in on the tackle along with Matt Robertson and John Abadi. Excitement. You see Ty Hall who was pumped up. Boy, that's walking the dog there, brother. I mean, that's getting it done. When your big fellas can start moving people out of the way, staying on their feet, then your back has an option to slip and slide, find a sweet spot, you can move the chains. Boston College is back. James Martin and Jeremy Trueblood cleared the way that time on the left side of the BC line. First and 10. They're at the 13. Whitworth again. Big hole left side. And gets inside the 10 and is dropped there by Gaddis at about the nine, actually the eight yard line. Ross Trueblood. Blood, Martin, we're talking about that left side of the line for the Boston College Eagles. Tenacious. BC's 12th first down. It's their fourth of this half. Here is Whitworth again. Inside the five. Down to the one. Drop the football. But it's blown dead. Blown dead. The ground can't cause a fumble. And it's going to be Boston College ball. Curry on the tackle. But it's another first down for BC. And they will have four shots at it from the one. And a chance to tie this game up. They're swinging the sledgehammer again. Patrick Ross, center bullet. Beckman. Jill is watching them, but that is crushing people. That's what we thought would happen early in the game. But Wake Forest wasn't having it. Here comes the fullback that is Toll for his sixth touchdown of the season. Brian Toll, the linebacker who becomes their short yardage connection, has done it for the sixth time this year, and Boston College has drawn even. It was hard to believe early on watching Wake Forest dominate this first half. But when you settle for field goals instead of catching into a touchdown, you leave yourself vulnerable to Here this comes, kind of play. Comes the point after. The 
great kick by Troost will give Boston College their first lead of this afternoon. 2.24 left to go here in the third. Let's look at the score again from Toll. Well, we thought it was David versus Goliath in this contest. Wake Forest wasn't having it. Now it's King Kong Godzilla. And we're going to find out now with the rest of what's remaining on this clock who has the guts, who wants the game, because it's anybody's. Toll just flew into the end zone. It looked for a minute there, Doc, that Wake Forest had gotten down. They were getting lower than Boston College, but yeah, he Brian went Toll went over upstairs and he's converted 15 of 20 short yardage runs. Reckless, man. Six touchdowns for him on the season. Yeah, absolute reckless. Talk about that Clemson game in overtime. We've got a brand new ball game here in favor of BC 21 20 224 left to go still plenty of football left and the reins renew themselves. I'd like to see Scott Kozlowski being thrown up you know, like that instead of one of the BC students. <laughs> Would that be me? That would be Scotty tossed up. <laughs> That's all he needs. And uh, you can see a body with the marks of warfare. It's been tough BC. The offensive line starting to take its toll. All right, it's a play on words that time. Because Toll was the one who scored the touchdown. Oliver getting ready to kick this one off. No, but now it's Barclay time. Yeah. He's got the ability to hog the ball and put the, put a drive together for the Demon Deacons. This is Marion at the three. Marion headed to the sidelines. The footing's loose, and he's brought down to the 24. A return of about 20 yards, and it'll be first and 10 Wake Forest as they set up in their own 24-yard line. Close captioning for today's telecast provided by SK, America's men's store, and the wardrobe supplier for our Jefferson Pilot Sports Broadcast crew. Corey Randolph in the middle of that Wake Forest tunnel now as they get ready to take the field once more. It's been a tough second half for them in total yardage. They have only 27 yards in this second half. Boston College with 71, and we still have a little under two minutes to play in this quarter. But Boston College has taken the initiative. They've scored 14 unanswered points now after Wake Forest got up 20 to 7. Boy, this quarter's been like pulling a mule uphill. <laughs> this has been slow as all get out, and that's what has allowed has allowed Boston College. Not only have they been able to take over, but they've got a ton of time. Wake's best field position in the second half. Their average start in the second half was the 18. They're at their own 24. And off goes to Micah Andrews. First carry of the day for the son of William Andrews. And he gets out to the 29-yard line. It'll be a gain on the play of five. Larry Anam, junior from Hialeah, Florida, makes the stop for Boston College. For BC, the job gets even tougher. Next week, Actually, uh, next uh, week from Thursday, they go to Virginia Tech. Huge game in Blacksburg. Randolph now steps up, changes the ball. Second down and five. Sprint to the right and a ground ball to Marion that goes incomplete. That would have been good for a first down or close to it. Tyrone Pruitt got some pressure on the play. That's what pressure does to you. It busts the pipe. It does bust pipes, baby. And, and, and Randolph has played well, man. He has been in total control. But now, again, Marion has only been used sparingly at this point. They need somebody to strike that match. We kill the flame. Wake Forest, 6 of 16 on third down. They've missed their last three. Back to throw, Randolph. Had some time. Pass complete to Selman. Selman upended. He, no, he's not going to make that. Yeah, that's That'll be close. Depending on the spot. Yep. He didn't get his shoulders good. turned. I mean, he got attacked. Pruitt and Dunbar. Yeah. See, they knew where the sticks were. I'm not certain Selma did. Because he makes a nice catch. At this point, now he's got to explode through the line. Yeah. And he didn't. And he got attacked. Now, give BC credit. Two on one, but we expect a lot out of our tight ends. Selman, of course, the son of Dewey Selman. Let me never mention the moms. No, I never. Oh, he did yeah, a generous good, spot, good spot and a first down. First down, Wake Forest, their first earned first down of the second half. And a key gain. Boy, those tight ends are smart. Oh, man. 
those high IQ guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First and ten. That was a big third down off the side. That was nearly a big interception by Tyrone Pruitt. Right through his hands, the sophomore from Brockton, Massachusetts, nearby. That would have changed dramatically because that was that the band would have played after that. Yeah, the plan, you better believe it. Water down the tube with Piper. Not, <laughs> I mean, that there right there is supposed to be to the yard. The body that we see, John had one off his shoulder pads. See, that was an accidental. He went for it, but it happens that way. Second down. Here comes Randolph. And Boston College is pretty much ready for every aspect of the option on the ground. And they snuffed that one out after a one-yard gain. Nick Larkin. Yeah, their defense is, uh, they have found whatever they lost. At that time, Smith, the 290-pound junior, he just threw his body into the pot. been a challenge for that group today but Larkin has played well you see Willis in the middle BJ Raji has played well and the true freshman Jim Romello has been outstanding third down and a long nine fake reverse here comes a pass to the reverse man Morton and he is nailed and very wow, short of the first down by short. yep Brian Toll in on the tackle the old Nate, he accelerated after the catch. He was aware of where he had to get. I don't think he got there. No, I don't think so. The punting unit comes on now. And so Boston College has held, and the momentum has definitely swung for the hometown Eagles. Will Blackman back in punt formation to receive the kick of Ryan Plackelmeyer, who has struggled a little bit today with the rain and the elements and the wind. Seven punts, 41-yard average. That's not bad. Dropped a couple inside the 20, and he's had a long kick of 60. This one has a line drive quality to it. Solomon at the 16. Solomon picks up open field. We've got a flag down. Solomon hauled down at the 48. Or Blackman, rather. Blackman hauled down at the 48-yard line. A great return of 41 yards, but it looks like it may be coming back. It is a hole. So Blackman's big moment is overshadowed by a yellow flag, and it'll back Boston College up inside their own 20. What a way to end a quarter, and wow. that stood up for Boston College. Illegal block in the back. Number 84 of the return team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. We'll give you a little angle, see if we can pick this up. You know, the effort oh, there, oh, yeah, went, and it's very behind slight. the play, too, yeah. but it doesn't matter. You know, when, this, when the guy with the ball goes past you, you might as well walk off the field. No sense in you getting physical when the runner is past you. Those are the kind that would just drive a, a coach nuts. You go ball hit it watching guys do things like that. Well, thank you. Not that there's anything wrong with losing your hair. Yeah, thank you. You're in a hole now. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> At the 12. Handoff now comes to Callender. And he covers up and gets out to the 14-yard line. That's the end of the third quarter, but mark it down as the quarter where the momentum shifted and Boston College took the lead on Brian Toll's touchdown and William Truce kick after. Boston College up 21-20 after three. to Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, where Boston College leads Wake Forest 21-20. Sitco presents ACC football from Jefferson Pilot Sports. And the BC Eagles now come out at their own 13-yard line. First and 10, worst field position of the second half for Boston College. Quentin Porter back to throw with time, and a pass incomplete intended for Blackman, but an interference call on Alfonso Smith is going to be called here. Wake Forest has been held back by several penalties. Penalties aided the first scoring drive that Boston College had in this uh, second half that resulted in the tight end deflected pass to the touchdown. Holding 77 offense. Pass interference. Number 11 defense. Penalties offset. 
Replay, second down. So the play is dead. Let's go to the sidelines. It's Scott Frzwanski. Well, in case you guys are wondering, it's uh, raining about as hard as it has all afternoon long. This place is soaked. But when you get in games like this, more than anything else, I think it's a mindset. And uh, case in point, in the first half when Boston College was losing and really down, all these benches right here were filled up with players just kind of sitting around. But now that they're winning, I haven't seen anybody come over here once. They're all standing up and cheering. I'm sure they're doing that on the wake side as well. But if you are wondering, it is wet, very wet. It's slick on the field. It's slick everywhere right now, except where you guys are. You're exactly right. Thank you very much. Scott, you look good in the rain. Yeah, he does. Yep. Looks better than I would. Second down and seven. We would never let you get wet, franchise. Thank you very much, Doc. Porter with a blitz on. Pass is complete, but not for much yardage. And that's going to be complete out there to Kevin Challenger. Our statue three quarters presented by Red Roof Inn. And they're starting to bend in favor of uh, Boston College, although Wake Forest has the total yardage figured out. Three turnovers. Confounded Boston College earlier, but penalties now have hurt Wake Forest. As Porter's back to throw on third down and four. Intercepted. Oh, oh Picked off on the play by Gaddis. He's in for the touchdown. On one play, just like that, Quentin Porter's second interception throw of the day. Josh Gaddis, his fifth career interception, and he brings it to the house. 28 yards on the return and when you look at this you say well it was pressure related coach Bible will have to talk to his quarterback he's going to say you had time where'd you go wrong well you threw where there was two one guy with your color jersey two of theirs so it was the read that got him in trouble it was not the pressure and here comes Sam Swank for the point after as Wake Forest now tax the point after on and they get the lead back by six 27 21 Josh Gaddis a 32 yard interception on a pass by Quentin Porter and the scale is tipped toward Wake Forest once again as they look to fashion an upset of the 14th ranked Boston College Eagles get Amica ACC football is brought to you in part by Alltel. Steve Martin, Rick Doc Walker, and Scott Brzezwanski here. Here's the score by quarters. Wake Forest with 20 points in the first half, 10 and 10. Boston College dominated the third. Wake Forest has started the fourth off with a 32-yard pass interception return by Josh Gaddis. And the Demon Deacons have the lead once again. This is Will Blackman. Back at the eight. Blackman, who really can bring it back, tries to back out of a tackle, but... Uh, Swank is there to put him down, and BC will start at their own 26-yard line. Our Suzuki walk-on way of life featured player is Patty Lynch. He's a junior fullback from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. He's a walk-on in the 2002 season, and now he finds himself in the starting lineup. He sets the theme of practice, says Coach Tom O'Brien, who likes to leave a scholarship open for a deserving player who walks on. And He's in the starting lineup because Mark Palmer, who was the starter during the season, was injured in the Clemson game. We salute Patty Lynch. He belongs at Boston. Oh, yeah. No, he's a pit bull. I love the guy, man. He can block, catch, I and mean, he does it all. L.B. Whitworth with that run. Brian Andrews and Patrick G. bring him down, but it's going to be close to a 10-yard gain on the play. Matter of fact, he'll move the chance. Hey, you watch the movement. Go back to what you do best. Unleash the canines, that offensive line, and let them go after it. And this is the way they're going to have to work their way back in the ballgame. It's second and one, and Whitworth will get the first down that we thought he had last time. He steps out over the 37-yard line. And Boston College has to kind of get the motors cranked again here because... They have plenty of time, though, Steve. Oh, yeah. Two, two one ball game. Say top of the seventh. Oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the hometown team gets another, an extra bat. That's right, you get the last in bat. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turnover margin. Wake Forest minus four coming in today, plus four, and they've turned three turnovers into scores. Turnovers have resulted in 17 Wake Forest points. Porter pass complete, and that is Soleil out there at the 45-yard line, close to a first down. Alfonso Smith, who's been outstanding. All afternoon. Taylor Soleil from Richmond Hill, New York, Staten Island. 
He's helped him. Brandon Robinson, a freshman who we've seen in the past. Uh, we've really got a number of people to throw to, but I think in crunch, Tony Gonzalez is a guy who has got to make a play for him between the hash marks. He and the tight end, Chris Miller, have been their most reliable receivers today. Here's the handoff, Whitworth. And Whitworth thunders into the Wake secondary and away territory at the 44-yard line. Patrick G comes up and makes the tackle. And it's going to be a 10-yard gain. Here you have Cherilis to pull 77. See, you big, big oh, nasty. He's pulling. He took two out. Oh, he does that regularly. He's he seek, seeking missile. Goes after people. <laughs> tries to punish people. First and 10 at the 44. Order to throw out of the pocket and can't get rid of John Abadi. Pick up on the play down to the 41 yard line, mark it for a three yard gain. Tucker had a great rush. But what we've seen with Porter is that he's competitive. He has made some plays with his legs. So you see, great rush inside. Joplin stays with him, but. Order coming off that ankle injury though, but he's competitive. He's made a few plays in this ball game with his legs. Shot a body. And that nose is gonna fall off. <laughs> Second down and seven. Pass is complete. It's good for the first down. Bringing it down, you guessed it. Gonzalez at the 32. It's a pickup of 13. Aaron Curry makes the tackle for Wake Forest, but you can move the chains for the Eagles again. Gonzalez is one of those guys, you don't even have to really draw a play up for him. He'll just get open, and he knows where to be. And comes back to the football, works it right in between the numbers. I mean, very reliable receiver. Whitworth again on first down. And Boston College's big line is starting to create some holes in the Wake Forest defense. Matt Robinson comes up for the stop, and it's Wake making the catches here. It's a four-yard gain, brings up second down and six. In that fourth quarter, starts to step step get into you your jersey's wet soggy and now you get those big hosses up front 317 across the board you throw in the little guy tight end Chris Miller at 270 Look at Boston College just for dessert yes nine first downs Whitworth trying to get a tenth he'll get down to the 25 yard line marking for a gain of three physical run physical run our first and ten line is presented by Call to Recycle. Visit calltorecycle.org to find out the or find the battery and cell phone collection sites nearest you. Well, Steve, Matt Robinson has played a great game for the Demon Deacons. We talked about him being a bit undersized early on, but he's he won the first half battle. Yeah, made a lot of plays, but this is crunch now. 10:30, ticking on Big Ben. Double tight end set and a huge play by Brian Andrews. Who comes in and flattens Whitworth? He went through. He went around the interference and blew up the play in the backfield. Yeah, he beat the bulk with quickness. Going left. Can you get through enemy lines? Beat him with speed. That's exactly what he did. He beat Patrick Ross on that play. Yeah, makes the big hoss. Makes him defenseless. There's nothing he can do about it. Well, BC thought they had everybody accounted for. And they did. Yep, except Until, him. There you go. <laughs> fourth down and nine. It's a rumble now, brother. Yes, it is. Big fourth down play coming for BC to keep this drive going. They're down by six. Order to throw has time and some territory. Heading to the corner and is dropped. By Alfonso Smith, shy of the first down. Boston College gives up on down. What a play. What a play by Alfonso Smith. He has made a number of plays for Dean Hood's Demon Deacons. I like this great decision because you don't want to make a bad play. Then he decides to compete and go after it. He has True Blood out there trying to throw a block for him. Alfonso Smith. And he leaned into that tackle to prevent Porter from stretching yes, for the first down. Oh, he rocked it. He did. You know, he's part of that group, Doc. We talked about it last week when we saw Wake Forest in Tallahassee. They called themselves the Fresh Deeks. Yeah. They were all on the scout team last year. These are the guys that Jim Grove was able to redshirt, and they've come on as a unit. We've seen some great contributions from Smith and also Aaron Curry. Here comes Micah Andrews. And Andrews gets up over the 25 to the 26-yard line. And haven't seen Barclay for a couple of possessions. Ray Henderson on the tackle. Last week, uh, Barclay got banged up in the Florida State game and was not around in the fourth quarter. Well, 
again and we talk about offensive lines but let's not leave out Wake Forest Steve Justice and company their fine center who's had a well of a game hard to believe this kid was a backup during the spring Matthew Grimm and Steve Dallas over on the right side that's where they like to go here comes the end around fake it's Andrews now and he goes over the left side and he gets out to about the 33 to 34 yard line and they just grind out some yardage you know, Andrews you can say it's not fair to have Barclay and Andrews but they've got two outstanding backs Andrews now with the first three games he was outstanding with 460 yards he's been somewhat susceptible to fumbles and those fumbles have been mortal turnovers because two of them have been returned for touchdowns that's why he hasn't seen an awful lot of action in the last three games and of course Chris Barclay served a one game suspension in there too Wake 7 of 18 on third down here comes Randolph he's got the first down he's tripped up by Jamie Silva who's made Jamie Silva's got to be close to 20 tackles in this game. Yeah. David Silva will not be at any post-game celebration for BC because <laughs> he'll be in ice. He'll be laying up in the dorm room in ice because Buddy, he has thrown his body around. I really like the way McWhite, the fullback, out leading. Silva, he, no, he's a hit man. Damon McWhite, a junior that Doc referred to, Woodbury, New Jersey. First and ten. Hand off to Andrews, and he's hit by Brian Toll right after he got the football. No gain on the play at the 40-yard line. We haven't mentioned Toll as much defensively as normally doing the BC game. No, it happened. And that's a tribute to Wake Forest because Toll's a player. I mean, he's this guy kid. He's good and gets around the ball, but they've been able to negate his big playability defensively. He was the Big East Rookie of the Year for Boston College a year ago. Could be one of the defensive players of the year for the ACC in his first year in the conference. Randolph about to be hit from behind by Cole. And it's a loose ball. It's going to be Wake Forest ball. They say it's a fumble and not a pass. And that's an important distinction because if Randolph's arm was going forward. See, he took offense to your comments, Steve. Yeah. If I were you, I'd give personal protection to your car. Wait. I don't think he's happy with you. I was bragging him up. to show you that he's a true baller. <laughs> and I'm with you. Brian, I, I had your back, man. <laughs> this is the kind of player I know you are. I don't understand what Steve was talking about. Chris DeGear, the only true freshman playing for Wake Forest, covers up the fumble. Third down and a mile and a half. It's a draw play to Andrews. Andrews gathers some speed on the corner. And he gets out to about the 37-yard line. It's a gain of about eight on the play, but it'll bring the punting unit on on fourth down. All right, you look at 112 yards rushing in for, for Wake Forest in the first half. Just 38 here in the second. And give that to the, the Eagles because they have, they have just played great defense. And they've had a lot of emotion back in the ball game and have tried to put themselves in a position to win. Ninth punt of the game for Ryan Plackemeyer. Comes in here just around 40 yard average. Blackman is back there to get the kick. Can a punter be MVP? Well, he could. Some votes. So get some votes. Yeah, he got he got the fake off that time. And now he gathers steam as Wake Forest will down the football inside the 15 yard line. They keep Blackman from advancing the ball. We've got to stop in the action here at Chestnut Hill. Six and a half to play, and Wake Forest is just that much from an upset. ACC football is brought to you in part by Chevrolet. If you look out over the reservoir here in Chestnut Hill, beautiful scene in any weather, and the weather has lightened up a little bit. We've got no, uh, very little light rain out on the field as. We get into this important part of the game. 6.33 left. BC down by six with the ball. Porter, pass. Almost oh, picked off. Goodness. Aaron Curry. The intended receiver was Blackman. But Curry was in front of him and Alvonso Smith in front of the receiver. And that's just too easy. I mean, Porter is just too good. Either that ball got out of his hand, but even if it goes to his intended receiver, I think he picked the wrong kid. You go into Blackman, there's three white shirts around Blackman. Yeah. I mean, at a certain point, you know, you just, the number count doesn't favor you. You see on the handle, Curry on the tackle, and that uh, is going to be Andre Callender. 
For our Aaron scoreboard on this busy afternoon, there's got to be sun shining somewhere. At Ole Miss, they're having a good one in the SEC. 10 all. Texas Tech pedal to the medal on Kansas. Ohio State has moved ahead of Michigan State. And Minnesota with a 10 point stiff arm on the Badgers. Later tonight in the ACC, Florida State at Virginia at Charlottesville. Third down and seven for Boston College, and a key third down coming. Porter with time. Porter grab from the back, and it's intercepted. Riley Swanson. The third interception of the day. Riley Swanson brought down at the 24 yard line. Wake Forest defense has answered the call. They've caused five BC turnovers. Wake Forest has scored on three of them. And they blocked a punt and scored a field goal off that. Well, this one I have a better understanding for because he's trying to make a play. Line broke down. It's all about pressure. That time, Wake had it. So that's not just on Porter. The offensive line's got to take a little burden of that one as well because Thompson had a big league rush for Wake Forest, and that was a team defensive play. That's the turnover story for Tom O'Brien's team. Wake Forest now in Boston College territory and a chance to put this game away. Inside handoff, here's Chris Barclay. Toll leads the charge to back it up, helped by Larkin and Raji. As the forward progress will be marked off to the 24-yard line, it'll be a gain on the play of about four. And the Eagles, Steve, they have no time to feel sorry for themselves. Because if you hold them to three, you're still, you know, one score away. You're still in this thing. But yep. they've got a five turnovers. You're not supposed to beat any good football team. No. And you I turn mean, up. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it started right on the opening kick. Absolutely. But Wake Forest has had exemplary play from their secondary and linebackers today. Randolph takes it around the end, and he gets down to the 20-yard line. Brought down on the tackle by Toll and also by Ricky Brown and Henderson. All three linebackers in on the play. It's a gain of another three. It pushes the chain down to the 20-yard line. Brings up third and three. What a year for the ACC. Yeah. I mean, just think of the game. Think of the games that we've had. I mean, oh. Every week, man, it's a tug of war. Earlier this season, Miami winning in double overtime at Clemson. Then we go into the week after. And uh, BC beats Clemson in overtime. Uh -huh. How about Clemson in Maryland? That's right. And off inside now comes to Parkland. You look at that game, and then you see what the Terrapins turned the tides against the Cavaliers. Yep, against Virginia. You know it happens, and 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 you can bet they're idle this weekend, but they're looking at this game and they're oh, kind of yeah. looking at their I jobs. still go back to Virginia Tech in the opener at NC State. Yeah, I think that's when they really got. Uh, their machine moving forward as we see Wake Forest and Barclay trying to grind out a yard. And they may be short. And let's see if they bring the, the kicking unit on. They're going to keep Barclay and company and Corey Randolph out there. Now, they may walk the clock down a little bit and then call for a timeout. You don't want a field goal to beat you. Yeah. Wake, you want to at least get four up or. So they call timeout to talk things over. All right, we'll take a break with them with 341 left to go here in the fourth. Wake Forest leads Boston College 27-21. Wake Forest is going to kick the field goal with 341 left to go. Sam Swanks hit two today, one from 21, the other from 32. This one a 34-yarder. The kick is up, and it is good. The Wake Forest Demon Deacons take advantage of the fifth Boston College turnover of the day. They extend their lead to nine. Wake Forest 30 and Boston College 21. Comes back quickly on the kickoff after the Sam Swank field goal. Will Blackman brings it out to the 31 yard line and that's where Boston College will start first and 10. But you look at uh, Wake Forest, they've cashiered on five turnovers, four of them directly have resulted in scores, and then a block kick has set up a field goal. So there's Riley Swanson. He got the last interception. Swanson, two career interceptions. He's playing in place of Kevin Patterson today. Didn't make the trip because of appendicitis. And Swanson 
getting the call and doing a good job today on off on defense. First and ten, Boston College. New quarterback, Matt Ryan. Pass is complete, and it's to Chris Miller in the flats. He's out to the 35-yard line, a gain of four. Aaron Curry on the tackle. Let's go to Scott Przewanski on the sidelines. Yeah, you guys, you see that Boston College is going to Matt Ryan. Keep in mind, this is a very capable quarterback. He played in those two games and led BC to victories without uh, Porter in the game, including an overtime win at Clemson, so he can get the job done. And uh, Porter, of course, throwing three interceptions on the day. The pass is complete. And again to the tight end, Miller. And this time it pushes Boston College to a first down, two yards shy of midfield. So it's the two-minute drill for the Eagles. And they've got some territory to make up and nine points. They've got two scores they've got to get. Ryan is a sophomore from Exton, Pennsylvania. Back to throw, Ryan. Time to throw over the middle. Nearly picked off. Alfonso Smith. Doc, he's been all over the field. A little bit too much. A little bit too much. <laughs> Ryan threw that one right through his hands. And they shown some poise. It's got to be tough to stand on the sidelines. And a weather day like today. And then get your adrenaline pumped and go in and play. But Alfonso Smith, again, some guys are just in the zone. Today, number 11 for Wake Forest is that guy. Second down. Coming up now for Boston College, 2.45. BC has all of their timeouts left, and they're down nine. Trying to avoid the upset. Here is Ryan to throw again. Pass out there complete. And a big game coming. Stepped out of bounds. You know, we've talked a lot about Brandon what, Robinson. What the young guys have done for, for Boston College. Seeley, who you've mentioned, Robinson. This time, good catch. And you just inches away. That would have brought this house down. Yes, What's left of it? Yep. Well, there's a lot of people underneath the eaves here. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Here's Ryan. Steps up, fires down. Field. Gonzalez is open. And Gonzalez is going to score for Boston College. When in doubt, go to Gonzalez. Gonna pick up a flag. That's not good. 38 yards on the throw and catch. It crunched 230 in the fourth quarter. And the Eagles will die. Here you watch it, Steve Martin. Protection. Premium. Right down the gut, one-on-one. -on -one. The move after is what separates it and makes him a playmaker. The flag is thrown in the end zone. A 38-yard hookup for touchdown for Gonzalez, which is his fifth career touchdown, and it's gonna be his third of the season. I mean, how do you expect the kid not to be excited about that score? Oh, boy. And that narrows the field. It's a three-point game and about to be a two-point game. Legal celebration. 26 on the offense. 15-yard penalty. Forced on the kickoff. Man, we've had those type of penalties. He had a penalty like that in the Florida State game last night. The kid just raised his hands in the end zone. I'm never going to agree with that. Here comes the point after by Truce. The kick is up, and it is good. And Boston College is just one point, two points away. A field goal away from taking the lead with 2.30 left to play. Wake Forest gets the ball. The Sitco ACC Game of the Week has been brought to you by Sitco for the road ahead. By Advance Auto Parts. By Cooper Tires. By Chevrolet. And by Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership. Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, the scene of a great game between Boston College and Wake Forest. Let's see how Gonzalez scored that last time out. Well, Gonzalez says the guy's been going underneath. Well, he's going to catch number five right here. You see him, he'll get right in the gap. Johnny Edwards got out of position, but what I like most is about Gonzalez is how he finished the play to get himself in the end zone. They could ill afford to wait more time to score. And they're going to have to back them up a little bit because of the celebration in the end zone. They'll be kicking from their own 20-yard line. But the score is on the board. You can't take that one away. 
And Boston College now just a field goal away from possibly winning this game. But Wake Forest will have a lot to say with that. Kevin Marion now will have better field position to return this kickoff. And the Wake Forest Demon Deacons still just two and a half minutes away from doing something as Doc mentioned they hadn't done. And that is since 1979 beat a ranked team on the road. But they'll be face. And there it is against North Carolina. And they were ironically 14th ranked. David Dave Berenger, man, what a guy. I'm telling you, you know, on it. Short kick taken by Sykes, and Sykes brought down by Jamie Silva at the 41 yard line. And coming up next week on many of these same ACC stations from Sitco and Jefferson Pilot Sports, it's a great rivalry in the ACC when the Cavaliers, the Wahoos of Virginia, come down to Chapel Hill to take on North Carolina. Matt Baker and company, Marcus Hagens, Wally Lundy, all the stars will be there. We hope you will too. High noon on JP Sports on many of these same stations. Brought to you by Sitco, Virginia, and North Carolina. One of the most beautiful vistas in college football, Keenan Stadium yeah, in Chapel Hill. That it is. Among the pines. First time I went, I got lost. I was by the hospital. I, I didn't never saw it. I literally never, I didn't find it. No, it's right. right I felt like a complete moron. <laughs> Just find the hospital. 224 left to play in this ball game. Now Corey Randolph with the most important offensive series all season for Wake Forest. Get a first down, keep the clock running, come home with a win, and B.J. Raji comes up and sacks Randolph, and B.C. calls for time. Raji has that kind of talent. Yes, he does. And I, I mentioned the Florida State game. I watched this young man dominate up front. He captures the line of scrimmage, his great explosion. You talk about him as a basketball player. See the quickness? Boy, your quickness, explosion. He can definitely take a game over. Now, you, you, you bring back Washington, Kiwanuka, and all of a sudden you go, okay, that's the Eagles. Yeah. yeah that's, 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 quite a, that's quite a group. Kiwanuka, of course, not playing today. But, you know, uh, Frank Spaziani talks about Raji, and he says he's the Matthias Kiwanuka at the defensive tackle. Oh, no question. He's got that type of range, speed, size. And he has thrown Wake Forest off schedule here. A four-yard loss to bring up second down and 14. I watched him against Florida State and knew then that he was pure canine. <laughs> he could control the game. And here's a final. Ohio State returns to its winning ways, upending Michigan State. And that game at Columbus today, 35-24. to 24. Trying to stay in the chase. DCS chances are flagging for the Buckeyes. Second down, 14, Wake Forest. They didn't want to be in a position where they would have to throw the ball. But if they don't get appreciable yardage here, they'll have to. Randolph, play action, back to throw. Blitz is on, pass complete to Selman. Selman picks up some tacklers and gets across the 45-yard line to the 47. Ryan Glasper with a good open field tackle. It's a gain on the play of 10. Gets them somewhat on schedule to third and five. Boy, good hands by Zach. This is big. Got Glasper closes the cushion. Here's 24. Now watch the room he makes up. That's makeup speed. And Selma can run. Boston College calls time again as you look at it one more time. And you watch it, watch the makeup speed. A first down there by Selma, and this is checkmate. So that was critical. Now you look at what this game means. You look at the top 25. The AP Top 25, you have four ACC teams there. Virginia Tech, Florida State unbeaten. Miami once beaten. Boston College once beaten. But their ability to keep traction in that middle of that group, I don't think a loss here would take them out of the Top 25, but it would send them down there into the 20s. And Tom O'Brien wants the momentum to keep going. Sure, his team has lost to Florida State, but he can get some help down along the line from teams like Maryland. He's got to keep his team on track. Yeah, they were really uh, gracious to Florida State. They gave them the first seven points. You, yeah. know, you look at what 14. BC it gave them points. Then when BC locks in and stops beating BC, they're tough to beat. But at the end of the day, five turnovers, three pass interceptions, two fumbles, a block kick. Six plays in this game have done BC in. Their defense looking to hold on third down and five. Two eleven left. They have one timeout remaining. That said, they still have a chance. Yep. 
figure it out. But those chances diminish if Wake moves the chains. Play action for Randall. Time to throw. Pass complete to his fullback, McWhite. Nope. No first down. Nope. And Silva comes up with a tackle. It's a one-yard gain. That's all to the 47-yard line. And Boston College is going to get another shot. This is great defense. You know, you hate to throw a pass under the sticks. You want your receivers to get the distance. Pressure wasn't a problem. You know, it's, if, if my guy, if you catch it, I want a first down. If you drop it, I can live with it. But to catch it short, that to me is a sin. Well, it's a type of pass, too. Everything is flowing to the side. You got to gather the ball in, then gather yourself, yeah. plant, and go forward. Now, and you want guys to get to the sticks and, and then put the pressure on the offensive line to help it get it done. BC now, no timeouts. Yep. Take their final timeout. They have two minutes and three seconds left to go. Ryan Plackemeyer coming up with an important punt here. He can kick BC deep. Now, question is, do you want to kick it deep? Or do you want to kick it away from Solomon? All right, All right. I wanted to kick it deep. All right. Uh, because now you want to stretch this field. Because if you, you look at this team, it's going to come down now to, and you can't always judge a guy by his stats. But you're looking at distance of field goals. And you got a guy back there to catch the kick that can turn this game around in BC's favor. And that is Blackman. Little Blackman. Yards. Yep. Line drive smacker that Blackman wisely allows to go into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. And Boston College has a minute and 56 seconds. They don't have to score a touchdown. They just have to get into field goal range we'll of their walk-on senior kicker. 45 yards, though. That's He's right. on the 39, so you have to question the range in that. We're going to find out if he's a hero. Well, there's been drama in the kicking game for Boston College, of course. And could uh, be a comeback similar to what that man fashioned, the Heisman Trophy winner, Doug Flutie, completing his career with the New England Patriots. They missed three field goals in their loss to Bob to Wake Forest last year. They missed three field goals last week against Virginia. Ryan back to throw in first and ten at the 20 as a pass complete to Gonzalez. And Gonzalez gets to the corner and up to the 48-yard line. A 28-yard grab. And that's the one guy, if I were going to double anyone, you think, hey, man, Gonzalez has been in the zone. He's been the most consistent player on this offense. What a ball game. He got him back of the strong safety Aaron Mason. But Wake Forest, Steve, has relied on their pressure. Yes. That's why they're in this ball game. First and ten ball, a yard and a half shy of midfield. Make it two at the 48 of Austin Gump. BC down by two. Minute 49 left. Ryan with time again. Pass complete. This one's to Blackman. It's close to another first down. Alfonso Smith on the tackle. I think they'll be able to move the chains again. A minute and 43 left. BC with no timeouts left. And they're closing in on field goal range. Well, you work on this so long, and then you come in here and you have your backup quarterback in the ball game. That's a tribute to his tutelage. Ryan to throw and just throws it up into row five. Smart call, gets out of the pocket. This is Matt Ryan against the Clemson Tigers. He took a hard shot in that game. He goes in for a score. And, of course, they picked up a big win in overtime. That touchdown got him the win against Clemson. Matt Ryan can get it done. There's depth at this quarterback spot. He got a win over Ball State as well. And Boston College. And then, of course, he finished the game, which turned out to be a loss to Florida State. Quentin Porter had a tough time here today. Three picks. And each of them set up a score. Ryan back to throw. Looking down the middle of the field for Soleil. Flag on the play. Aaron Curry interfered with Soleil as he's went to turn. That's the matchup you want. Whenever you can get a linebacker matched up with a skill guy and he really didn't have didn't have to touch it I don't think you'd have made the play pass 
interference on the defense. Number 59. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And now at the 26-yard line, here's the play again. Look at that offensive line. Oh, look, there's the collision. Yeah. And if he were able to look back for the ball, not intentional. The receiver has the right to get to the ball. And Curry was more accidental than anything else. Look for Boston College to maneuver into the field goal range. Now here's Ryan to throw. Touchdown. They're looking in the end zone for Challenger. He caught it, but is it out of bounds? There's no signal yet out of bounds. Kevin Challenger, the sophomore from Montreal, says he was in bounds, but the back judge says he was out. We'll go to our spotter. It's a touchdown. They changed the call. This may be reviewed. It likely will. But until it's changed over. 26 yards of the throw and catch. Who woke the Eagles up? Who that? This is Challenger. One foot. Does the second foot get down? He got one. Whether it's in or not, Matt Ryan might be in. Oh, boy. Because, buddy, this is too that great. Is, that's a heck of a throw. And it, you just couldn't get any better. Yep. Because either his guy gets it or nobody gets it. Now, this is under review. Classic fade route. Does he have possession? The naked eye, to me, looks he's out like he's out. Yeah. One foot is in. Well, I'd question that. I'm just saying, now, when you look at over and over and over... The question is, yeah. did the front foot touch the white? And that's what uh, I know. give him credit for trying. I mean, he had a great, he was cognizant of where he was. It's a terrific athletic move to make just to even put this in doubt. From that angle there, we see, you know, he looks in, but that's not the best angle we've shown. And, and you saw some communication between Mike Cullen, the field judge, and Doug Rhodes, the back judge. Now, the field judge, he calls it out. He actually didn't make any call for a no, second. He didn't make any call yet. No, he... And then he consults with the back judge, and they call it in. He was caught up in the moment. Yep. And understandably, because from that standpoint, it looks like that's in. He has possession. And it's it, this is a tough call for the field judge to make because, one... He's shielded from the ball. Yeah. He's trying to see if it's a completed pass. Right. And you look at his eyes. He's looking at possession. Doesn't have time to look down to where the foot is. I like it by committee. Make the right call. You don't have to. It's not about anyone's manhood. After review by replay, the call stands on the field. Touchdown. Touchdown. Boston College takes the lead. Dramatically here on a touchdown hookup of 28 yards. 38 yards to Kevin Challenger. His first career touchdown. And the Eagles are in front 34 to 30. Goes back, folks, to that first possession with Wake Forest coming off a fumble. Settled for three, first and goal. Bruce kick after is good. Kevin Challenger from Montreal. His 13th reception of the season. It's a 26-yard touchdown catch. And Boston College now is a minute and 18 from ending a two-game losing streak to Wake Forest. Ryan now 7 of 9 for 134 yards, two scores. Look at the biggins up front. Oh, that's manhandling. A body up front, the ball to throw, catch, concentration, toe tap, touchdown Eagles. You only need one foot oh, in college. Hey, you got to give him a lot of credit for showing hard. That young man there. Pure baller. Wow, look at that. Seven of nine. Yeah. Two touchdowns, 134 yards, and he's only been in six minutes. Yeah. You sit in the rain for two and a half hours, and then you go in and do this. That's impressive. That is impressive. Now the ticks here for rain. Well, it's not raining anymore. The wind is up. The rain has stopped, and it's almost perfect conditions now. Four plays, 80 yards. And the touchdown hook up to Challenger from Matt Ryan. Took him 38 seconds to execute. And Boston College looking like they're going to stay in the chase. However, let's point out, 
Yeah, that Wake Forest has beaten Boston College the last two times on a touchdown scored in the last minute. Yeah, last possession. You know another thing, too, their defense has given them an opportunity to be in this ball game because the offense was just not clicking. Last year, ball. now Wake has two timeouts in this game now. Boston College has none. Wake's winning touchdown last year came with 116 left. Two years ago, up here in BC, it took place with one minute and three seconds left. One was to Willie Idolet last year. The other was two years ago to Chris Smith. And Corey Randolph threw both touchdown passes. This kid here, Marion, Marion, is the most dangerous guy on the field because he has the ability to flush this crowd out of here with one run. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. But a lot of this rain-soaked crowd now drying off in the breeze as the rain has abated, and what they've seen is an excellent football game out of these two teams. Ryan Olinger getting ready to kick. There's the hero of the moment, Matt Ryan. Six minutes of work. Five minutes of work, really, and two touchdown passes, and he's only missed on two passes. This is Marion at his own 10. Marion looking for running room, and he'll be brought down to the 24. He who hesitates is lost. Or tackled. Yeah. That, you know, the coverage for Boston College, everybody is going to give you the best effort. You have to attack these returns. And I like his speed. I like guys who take it, hit one direction, and hit it. At this point now, not going to happen. No. Corey Randolph, first and ten from his own 24-yard line. Wake has two timeouts. Randolph to throw. Has a man out there complete. That's Bolden. And Bolden is brought down. He quiets the crowd at the 46-yard line. Gain on the play of 22. I mean, as much as we talk about Matt Ryan and his accuracy, look at Randolph. Under pressure. Ball right on the mark. Bolden knew exactly where he needed to be. Amy Silva with yet another tackle. First and ten. Dickinson not so fast. 46-yard line. Pass complete. Again to Bolden. He slips at midfield. A gain of four. One minute left to play. The clock will still run. BC Armbrough doesn't have any timeouts. And now Will Blackman returns to his customary spot in the secondary as the nickelback. The dime back here. Only three-man rush for Boston College. Screen pass comes out to Barclay. Snapped out by right Ricky Brown at the 49. Brooks had a couple big plays today for the Eagles. And Wake Forest will call another timeout. You go all the way back to spring ball, summer ball, you condition for moments like this. Are you going to have the stamina? to get through and finish. They've run this little slip screen a couple of times in the ball game, but too many Eagles at the point of attack. ACC football today produced by Dave Berenger. Our director is Dave Burchett. Producer for ACC today, Beverly Rumley. Up here in the booth, Elena Mahan is our stage manager. Arthur Katz, our statistician. Official stats, Eric Schulman, Rich Frischer. And Mark McGurdy, our spotters, and Mike Matteo is our audio guy up here in the booth. And we've had a great day here with a great crew at Chestnut Hill. Amen to that. And we're about to have a wild finish to this one. One more timeout left for Wake Forest. 39 seconds left to go. 35-30 Boston College. And, of course, our guys in the rain out there. There's Bush, there's Bill, and Scott Brzezwanski down on the field. Got him. Randolph back to throw. Third down, complete to Idolette. Turns his shoulders, heads for the first down marker and out of bounds to stop the clock with 32 seconds to go at the Boston College 42. You ever want to see an example of speed? Ray Henderson, who's played a well of a game for Boston College. Three, bottom of your screen. He goes in to close in, and then no chance. Willie turns on the Jets. Yeah. First and 10, 30 seconds to play. Here is Randolph, goes down as he throws, and he throws that one away to avoid the sack. There's a flag down on the play. 
And a hold against Wake Forest. Wake has been done in by penalties this entire second half. And this one will back them up. On the offense, number 72, 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. So that pushes Wake Forest back from the Boston College 42. And they'll go back to their own 47. It'll be first down and 20. 25 seconds left. Wake still has a timeout. Make of the flat pass. Now they go to it and throwing it out of bounds. There's going to be Randolph intended for Idolet. Anam and Brown covering on the play. Boston College's defense. Their offense may not have executed well this afternoon, turning the ball over five times, but their defense has limited the damage. Yeah, really, the offensive guys down in the chow line this week are put half the food <laughs> on the defensive guys' plates. Second down and 20. 20 seconds left. Flat pass, Idolette. Trying to get him out of bounds and try to get the first down. He does not get out of bounds. The clock continues to run. And now Wake is forced to use its last timeout. Now that's incredible. Ricky Brown, he ran it down. And that time, unlike Ray Henderson, Ray wasn't able to get him. But Ricky Brown lowered his gears. Not a let. I mean, sense of urgency. You got to get out of bounds. Yeah. Can't be looking out yeah, the field. Yeah. Yeah. That was the brain lap there. You got to get out of bounds. Great chase by Ricky Brown. Wake Forest, 9 of 23 on third down. They were so efficient in the first half. There's Matt Ryan looking on. Could he have, has he done enough? Well, he's 11 seconds away from relief pitching duties and getting the win. Wake Forest will have two shots of this, and that's it. Even if they get the first down. They're out of timeouts. 11 seconds left to play. There's been nothing available for them deep downfield on the last two plays. Thanks to the coverage by Boston College. Idolette in motion. Three wide receivers to the left. Looking right. Now left. Now right. He's got Bolden. Incomplete with five seconds left to go. Well, that was close. Silva and Blackman are covering for Boston College. Bottom of your screen, pass pro, pretty decent. Right at the end, though, just a little bit can distract you. And again, the ball's not in the end zone. And Bolden might have been screened. Yeah, that's right. Might have been, that could have been, could have been close. He got behind the he got behind the defenders. Probably the last shot for Corey Randolph. And he's going to be sacked. And that'll do it. Nick Larkin ends the madness at Alumni Stadium. And Boston College's defense, which sent a notice when it stoned Wake Forest when they got the ball at the one-yard line and held them to a field goal. This time, they keep Wake Forest from getting what would have been the game-winning touchdown. And Boston College keeps their record. They get bowl eligible. They're 6-1 and one as they beat Wake Forest 35-30 to 30 in a thriller here at Chestnut Hill. A dejected Jim Grobe and the Demon Deacons head to the locker room. Barry Gallup over to congratulate the Deeks on a great game. And here's Randolph again. Totally fitting that this defense oh, yes. would end up with the final big play. And Larkin comes up with a tackle. Here's Randolph to throw. And, you know, there's no one to blame. When you're in pre-mint, they're in pre-mint. Not a lot of alleys open. Let's go to the sidelines. Our Scott Brzezwanski is standing by with the quarterback of the Boston College Eagles who threw two touchdowns, Matt Ryan. Yeah, Matt Ryan, one of the heroes. And, Matt, I was watching when you got the call to go into the game. You were running around trying to find your helmet. How'd you stay focused and be able to come in here and make those plays? As a backup quarterback, you got to stay focused all the time. And uh, you never know when your time's going to come in the game. And 
You know, coach told me I was going in. I had to do whatever I had to do to get ready and go in there and try and make plays. How much has it helped you in an experience like this, knowing that you played two games, were able to lead the team to victory, especially down at Clemson where you guys had to come from behind? Yeah, definitely. Uh, both of those games really helped me out. Um, you know, they were good wins for the team and, uh, you know, good confidence boosters for myself. So, yeah, they definitely helped out. Tell, tell me a little bit about that last touchdown play because you really threw that ball in a great timing play. Yeah, we just, uh, you know, it was a good call from upstairs. Coach Bible made a great call. Uh, we threw in a little pump fake, got the guys to come up a little bit, and then I looked back the other side. Kevin was open, made a hell of a catch down there at the end, and, uh, you know, that was a great way to win a game. Matt, one more question for you. Throughout the whole comeback in the second half, you guys were down. I was on the sidelines with you. You never seemed like you were giving up. What does it say about this group of teammates, the way you guys came from behind? We're tough, and, uh, you know, we're going to play 60 minutes of football, and uh, we're going to go out there and give it our best, and I think we did that today, and we came out with a W. Okay, Matt Ryan, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. Okay, Steve, we'll take it right back up to you. All right, Scott, and thanks to Matt Ryan. All the drama here at Boston College and the man of the hour, Kevin Challenger, who caught the go-ahead touchdown. Um, Ryan now 7 of 9, 134 yards and two touchdowns and standing by with Tom O'Brien. Again, Scott Brzezwanski. Coach O'Brien, how about that comeback and how about the play of Matt Ryan there? Well, I tell you what, these kids just kept playing. Uh, we made so many mistakes and tried to give the thing away, but we found a way to win it. You know, that, that's pretty good for us. I mean, 6-1 and one at this point, and we need the week off. We're tired. <laughs> You're tired. You, uh, real quickly, Coach, you endured the rain and you battled. What does it say about your club? They like to play football. I mean, these kids just come out, they play, they don't care what the weather is, what the score is, anything. We, you know, our goal today was to play 60 minutes because they outplayed us the last two years, and we played 60 today and won the game. Thanks again for your time. Thank you. That's Coach O'Brien. Steve, back up to you. Thank you, Scott Brzezwanski. And despite five turnovers and the absence of Matthias Kiwanuka, Boston College kept their focus, came from behind, and defeated Wake Forest 35-30. Back after a word from your local ACC stations.